absolute, total and complete masters of misdirection. While you're busy looking at the beautiful assistant of the magician in her garter belts and panties, he's over there loading the next trick up, loading the next rabbit up in the trap door table that has the hidden hidden opening at the top so he can reach down through his hat and grab the rodent by the ears, pulling it up to amaze the childlike audience. And we've seen this with WikiLeaks. I even bought into it for about an hour. Assange was going to come out on his balcony and do a press conference from the embassy that he's been staying in for several years in London. At 10 a.m. on Tuesday. But then because of threats, he said, we're not doing that. I'm going to do it some other way, which is via Skype. And I talked to folks Saturday and Sunday and confirmed all this. And just to let you know how accurate my sources are, they said, no, he'll be going at 9 or 10 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time on Tuesday. But don't announce that yet because he doesn't want any assassins or snipers and believe me, folks, they want him dead. They've already caught somebody trying to get in to kill him. They don't want to know the exact time, so it may even change again. But then sure enough, they tweeted out about an hour ago that it's going to be 9.30, 10 o'clock, Greenwich Mean Time, Tuesday. That's basically 3 a.m. our time. We're going to have a live feed tonight starting in around, I'd say, 2.30 in the morning or so. And it's going to run through right through until the early morning hours with myself here, Paul Watson, and others covering WikiLeaks as it breaks. He'll be in London. I'll be here from the News Center in Austin, Texas. So that is going ahead. That is happening. The word I've been told by the individual that <clears throat> met with Julian Assange is, quote, this is going to devastate Hillary and that this is, quote, the end of the Clintons. Devastate and end of the Clintons. Devastate and end of the Clintons. Devastate and end of the Clintons. Now, I've made the point that they could eat babies on the White House lawn and barbecue them. I made that for years and that no one would care if the Clintons or Obama did that. And now that's been picked up as a popular nomenclature. Again, I'm not bragging to say that things I've coined become popular parlance. I just want you to know we're in the fight. You're in the fight. We're having an effect. We're big media. The dinosaur media is falling apart and is a joke. And with all the king's horses and all the king's men combined together, they're bigger than us. But their information is lies and no one believes them. So it's all a hollow victory for them or a pyrrhic victory. So mega huge news today on the WikiLeaks front. And... We have Roger Stone joining us, obviously, uh, at 1.30 in about two and a half hours. We also have other huge news on the, who I believe is the illegitimate son of Bill Clinton, Danny Williams. Now, we've been talking to Danny Williams via email for years, and I knew about Danny Williams 20 years ago, back when he was still a child, and the reports of the the... State police delivering $700 checks every month to a shack and his black prostitute mother. And again, I'm not bashing for being a prostitute, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm a libertarian. Everybody knows that. I'm just pointing these facts out. Who I am bashing is Bill Clinton, who gave him Christmas presents, you name it, a lot nicer than Hillary, uh, but that never did a blood test, never properly took care of his son. If I have any illegitimate children out there, Lord knows I might, actually. I'm being serious. I was a pretty wild buck when I was young. Come forward. I mean, I want a blood test. I want to know my children, just as a father. I'm not saying I have illegitimate children, but I mean, most men that have been promiscuous or promiscuous, if that's the right word, I'm inventing words now. I've just created two new words <laughs> who are involved in promiscuity. That's the right way to say it. And who are promiscuous. See, I can't say it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's October 3rd, 2016. As we race less than 35 days left in the final countdown, to this election, if you look at DrudgeReport.com, it's got a bunch of headlines about families breaking up, friendships breaking up, record amounts of depression 
uh, sleepless nights. I hate to say I've got my pulse on the world, but I really do. I'm just a common person that really tells it like it is. And that's the secret to being a true media analyst or pundit. That's all Drudge does. A regular guy who's smart, who is a populist, I'm speaking for him, who gets it and understands what's interesting and what's credible. But, but look what I said last week and the week before. Election stress, fever pitch, no sleep, irritability, heart palpitations, losing friends, Obama, it started with Palin, Gary Hart, Hillary doesn't get it. And she doesn't. But, but again, I'm just pointing out that it's not just over the media making uh, Trump such a demon. It's not just the fact that Hillary is so plastic and, and so corrupt. Everyone senses that there's a lot on the table. And if they're not informed, if they're not involved, if they don't understand globalism and populism and nationalism, Americanism versus the New World Order, corporate crony systems, then they can really believe that all their concerns and their anxiety and the economy not doing well and the race baiting that's being injected into the culture is really the fault of the people. And so then it creates a type of civil war atmosphere. Again, I told you over a month ago that Gary Johnson is either super evil or brain damaged. Because when he was here about a year and a half ago, he would growl at me during the breaks and make weird facial tics and then blow up. But then act normal on air, but very plastic. Now people are seeing this on TV. They're seeing him snap on people out of the blue. They're seeing him say, I don't know a single world leader. I don't know what Aleppo is. And again, I'm not obsessing on this. It's just that I went on a limb to say that I think he's a total screwball and something's wrong with him. Because I was in a studio with him for an hour. And man, he's the weirdest person I've ever interviewed in person. I mean, he was acting like a Manchurian candidate. Yeah, there's now these interviews where he sticks his tongue out and acts like a mental patient. That's the type of crap he was doing in there. And CJ and others saw it, where he'd just start looking at the ceiling going, oh, 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 oh. And, and folks were asking me, he really did that? My dad said, son, I heard that. Are you really saying Johnson was acting weird? I, I, mean, I mean, did that really happen? And I said, of course it did. Do you think I make stuff up? He goes, no, it just sounds so weird. And I think the reason I'm starting the show with those two points, that I'm losing sleep, people I know that have been friends for a long time that are more liberal won't talk to me now, uh, everybody's freaking out, there's massive stress. I, I just go with the truth. I go with what I'm seeing on the street. And then weeks later, months later, the news finally catches up with it. And the reason I start this important broadcast with that is I know we cover a lot of amazing things. But if I tell you we have a Secret Service source, multiple sources that say Hillary Clinton is falling down with epileptic seizures routinely, and then a month later it happens on TV, it's because we have those sources. It's very dangerous, by the way, to do that. We've got information right now that has people the most concerned of their careers for the information. I don't even like being on the edge of it. It's so dangerous, okay? I mean, this is the type of stuff they kill you for. The stuff we've got on Libya that breaks in one hour at Infowars.com. The stuff we've got on, who is clearly Bill Clinton's illegitimate son, uh, Danny Williams, who's 30 now. Uh, the information across the board that we have is so huge. And the biggest of all of it is WikiLeaks. I can tell you from folks that have met with Assange in the last 48 hours that this will, quote, devastate the Clintons. Devastate is the word. Devastate. And that, quote, this will be the end of the Clintons, no matter how much the media tries to cover it up, no matter what they do. So you got to ask yourselves, what is Obama going to do in the next, I don't know, how many hours is it until about 3 a.m. Central? That's 10 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. How many hours until that? How many hours? 12, 3, 15? 15 hours and change. We're 15 hours, 45 minutes away from knowing what's in the biggest data dump yet via WikiLeaks, because they built this whole NSA spy grid. WikiLeaks press conference, Tuesday, 10 a.m., Berlin time. So now they've moved it from Berlin, uh, I mean, from Greenwich to Berlin. That's one hour difference, so that's 2 a.m. We're going to be here covering it regardless. And again, look for them to change it again, because there is massive heat, massive pressure, massive threats. But Assange is very smart to release this Europe time and Asia time more so that the spin doesn't first hit here in the United States.
where the globalists are in full control. I am going to be up here tonight from 2, 3 a.m. on, kind of honchoing a live broadcast that will stream out to everybody on InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, and to the world. We're going to pick up the WikiLeaks feed as best we can from the conference, and we're going to have Paul Watson live time uh, covering it from London, England. In fact, I'm tempted to have Paul actually try to get into that conference and get it into Berlin right now. He's in London. I didn't think of this because they just announced the Berlin conference a few hours ago that, that, that that's where he's going to be releasing the info. But regardless, we'll be able to get the feed tonight. Get ready. 10 a.m. Berlin time. Is that is that 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Central? Find out for me, crew. Thank you. So this is all coming up t today into tomorrow. We're going to be covering it in live time. This is history happening. And to tell you how good our sources are with WikiLeaks, I called up Saturday and I said, I hear he's canceling the press conference Wednesday. And so it's like, no, that's a press conference standing in the balcony. Watch. A day later, that was announced. And it's going to be probably in the morning, 9, 10 a.m. Uh, England time. Boom. I was told that yesterday and this morning. And sure enough, that's exactly what WikiLeaks is doing. So I know my source is good. I have another source as well. But this just continues to prove exactly what's coming from uh, WikiLeaks that, quote, this is going to devastate the Clintons. And that, quote, this is the end of the Clintons. The end of the Clintons. So what are they going to do with the countdown? And, of course, there was this clip over the weekend of, of uh, Obama and um, Bill leaving the funeral of a former Israeli prime minister. And Bill Clinton won't come up the tarmac. Reportedly, Obama had been waiting 30 minutes already. Well, Clinton did Lord knows what. And so it's like, come on, Bill. Come on, Bill. Come on, Bill. Come on. Come on, Bill. And the fact that presidents wouldn't normally show each other that light level of disrespect, or, or kind of camaraderie, really, uh, but still it's seen as too jovial, this just shows that Obama, who still got all his wits about him, obviously, is just disrespects Bill Clinton because Bill Clinton is rotting in front of everyone. But look at DrudgeReport.com if you are a TV viewer. I am Bill Clinton's son. I am real. I want to meet my dad. There was no DNA test. The Clintons have always said, when this was coming up in the mid-90s when I was covering it and Danny Williams was 10 years old, when I almost got his mama and his aunt on, but then you see every time they complain, every time they speak out, then Bill somehow gets a little money to him that they deserve. Now, if it wasn't really his son, why would he do that? You need to take care of your son, buddy, not have him have to beg for it. So I, I mean, this could be a great asset for Bill if he hadn't dodged this all the years. Now it's going to look really bad when uh, Danny Williams is up there on the campaign trail with Donald J. Trump. <laughs> well, that hadn't happened yet, but I suspect that that's going to end up uh, unfolding. I am Bill Clinton's son. I am real. I want to meet my dad. There was no DNA test. There you go. And, of course, you've got the Daily Beast, my quest to find Bill Clinton's love child. And let me tell you, folks, he looks like Bill Clinton. His mother's got the evidence that Clinton, again, gave him Christmas presents, you name it. And Roger Stone talked about it back in January of this year, about 10 months ago. And that's the lower video on Drudge Report. Quote, there was no DNA test. We're going to play that. Uh, here in just a moment. We'll play that clip uh, first. Then we've got onlooker repeatedly yells, Bill Clinton is a rapist, live on Fox News. I want to salute this young man. I'm going to skip this network break. I'm going to salute this young man, but I'm going to tell you, getting up behind the barricade, screaming, Bill Clinton's a rapist, having the shirt, you were in a legal, lawful, open area. They advertise they want people to come and yell and scream. You were totally covered under law. You could sue the security people from Fox if you hadn't tried to flee forward and climb the barricade. The moment they grab you and then you flee forward, I'm still going to pay the 5000 and I want to say uh, great, 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 great job. But anybody else that climbs a barricade or something, I can't pay you when you're breaking the law. Do you understand? So the, the, the contest rules up to $100,000 is 1000 if you get the shirt on TV for five seconds saying Bill Clinton raped. It's 5,000, it's not 1,000 and 5,000 together, it's, it's 5,000 then if you get it visually on TV for five seconds and get out that Bill Clinton has settled rape cases, investigate Bill Clinton, it's about rape, it's not about 
infidelity. The media keeps spinning it that that's what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. It's about rape. It's about settling sexual assault cases. This guy is a Bill Cosby. Now, we've done the mathematics. It is WikiLeaks' announcement is at 3 a.m. Central, but we're going to be up here again by 2.30 live with a stream at Infowars.com, giving it live, exclusive coverage in the middle of the night, Infowars.com forward slash show. Any radio stations that want to pick it up or cover it uh, are absolutely welcome to. Another great place to tune in tonight, obviously, would be Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie, uh, because he's, he's one of the only shows that will be live during that time as well. In fact, I ought to call George. Uh, last time he invited me on, I missed the call back during the RNC. Maybe he wants me to pop in tonight because I've got a lot of inside baseball. Uh, obviously, we should call him. I don't usually solicit to go on the show, but this is a really important time to be alive right now, and I'm, I'm going to be up, so... If they aren't already scheduled, I'd, I'd love to come on. Usually they already have folks scheduled to come on, but I can tell folks what I've got on uh, WikiLeaks and also what we've got on the Danny Williams situation that we've been at the center of uh, for over a 20-year period. So we've got all of this breaking, all of this unfolding today. It is quite a time to be alive, my friends. But the reason I'm doing this with the... Bounty is kind of the word to use, or mainly this initiative, this operation, is the mainstream media is covering up the Black Lives Matter. It's funded by Hillary and George Soros, and they're attacking Trump hotels and Trump Towers and Trump International in uh, D.C. They're beating people up in the street, men, women, and children, uh, racist black people, mainly also racist Hispanics, uh, joined by racist whites. It's the same thing as mobs of KKK beating people up in the 50s or 60s. It's unacceptable, it's disgusting, and it makes my stomach turn. And the media will say, go assault Trump rallies. The media, Hillary's own email show, and, and via WikiLeaks, that they sent people to be violent at Trump rallies and, and then to blame him. We're not calling for going and being violent. We're calling when the news in New York or D.C. or L.A. or wherever is having live national shows, entertainment shows, music shows, I don't care what they are, they're out in public, you go up, you get a sign out that says Bill Clinton's a rapist, I don't care, with three or four people, hold up a giant one, whatever you want to do, you wear the shirt, whatever, it gets seen, thousand dollars just to make it fun to pay for the printing of the sign. You get audio with a bullhorn, like I've done many times, of 9-11's an inside job, or, you know, the borders are wide open, we're in an emergency, or the fellow reserves private, $5,000. And we've created an email. I'm sure the media will spin. It's rape at infowars.com. Let, let's change the email to stop rape, but, but make it the same email. We'll keep the other one too. Stop rape at infowars.com. We're going to create that email right now. Stop rape at infowars.com. And the young man needs to send us a Skype number. We need to see him on Skype or FaceTime or whatever. Send us a photo of himself with a shirt on, and we're going to send you the $5,000, but not before you're a big star on this show. And we need to know because was he drug away by security? Was he beaten up? Was he killed? I mean, I, I'm not saying that happened, but this is America. And notice a lot of the so-called onlookers standing behind aren't even fans. They are security. And they drag him away. He disappears when we saw this in Cuba, when there'd be somebody behind the cameras saying, Viva Liberty, down with the Castros, it is a tyranny. They would drag him away, put him in a police car. And that was a big scandal that our media didn't care about that. Where did this young man go? We need to call Tucker Carlson. He's a nice guy. In fact, Nico, we call Tucker Carlson and say, hey, bro, we want to get you back on the show this week. Obviously, we didn't target your show, but it isn't interesting. Um, the New York Times called us and said, did you put Tucker up to that? Is he working with you? No, we put the call out Friday. There was no coordination. We don't know this young man. He went and did this spontaneously. And I say kudos to him. But the maybe a misdemeanor of starting to climb a barricade on a public street, I don't think it is because how can a private group do that and say you can't enter it, is dwarfed by men dragging this young man away like we're some third world dictatorship. So this is a very, very, very serious situation, obviously. Uh, so do it legally, do it lawfully, do it with a group of people so that you have safety in numbers if you can, but whatever you do, do it.
do it. You, and by the way, I want to expand this. You don't just have to hit a national show. If you hit a local or regional show while they're out doing a live weather report with the hurricane coming in on Florida tomorrow and the next day, or Virginia or wherever, here's just examples. You look for satellite trucks, you see them go live, you jump in with a bullhorn, because from five feet it'll take over their mic, even though their mic's directional, and then you scream, Bill Clinton's a rapist, the media's making it up. Infowars.com, that'll end up going national, and if it goes national, I will pay you the $5,000. But regardless, a lot of people are like on the Donald on Reddit and stuff are saying, Alex, you know, you're a genius, you're a hero, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not saying I'm a genius or a hero. That's what they're saying. But how dare you insult us and offer money to do this? We're going to do it anyways. Great. That's the whole idea. You get 20 people to go on national TV saying Bill Clinton's a rapist or the media is covering up rape. It will force it out. And then our job will be done. That's the whole point. This is my October surprise. I've got about five more of them cooking. We got the big Libya investigation that goes up in the next hour. That's one of our major October surprises that Hillary knew Gaddafi wanted to give up, but wanted a failed state to turn it over to Al-Qaeda, now ISIS, and use it as a launch base into Syria and create an Islamic state. She wanted to make Libya an Islamic state. That's the big October surprise. Danny Williams, October surprise. We were working on getting him next week. I'm just going to leave it at that. It was pretty much set up, which we're still going to do. But this just happened organically because this is organic. This kid's been trying to get a hold of his dad for 25 years or so. When he would write letters to his dad, Bill had some heart. I hate to say it because he's so horrible, but he would send him Christmas presents and you know things like that. But never notes, never anything personal. And we give her $700 a month. She lived in a shack. So this is the only claim he's got to be an America's first black president. I guess that'd be... Thomas Jefferson, because if having sex with a black lady makes you black, then Thomas Jefferson had you know had it way over on uh, way over on Bill Clinton. So, what we're getting down to here, ladies and gentlemen, is the final countdown, the final 35 days. And since you guys, for radio listeners, were showing it, uh, I want to actually play this for radio listeners. This is Cuba and Clinton's historic visit there. And there's a bunch of videos of people jumping up behind live cameras on the street and then being drug away because someone did it. And can you believe that in America, on a Fox News show, I like Tucker, but I'm going to ask him about this, what he thinks of the fact that within three seconds, there's security there grabbing him. When they start trying to drag him away, that's when he runs back forward and tries to climb up onto the barricade. This guy's got a lot of courage. I almost want to give him more than 5000 But our budget is 5000 But we need to find out who he is. We need to make sure he's okay. So it's stop rape at Infowars.com or rape at Infowars.com. Send us your videos of you doing this. Bring some of them with a video to have another angle of it happening so that they can't stop you, so that they won't throw you in jail if they know there's coverage. But again, if people start doing this, it could bring down the new world order because it's not just about people yelling Bill Clinton's a rapist. It's about Hillary Clinton covered up Benghazi, ordered to stand down. Hillary Clinton's coming for your guns. If we go out to every live media event, and if we call into all the local talk radio shows, and if you call into C-SPAN, and if you get really aggressive, just this audience of three million terrestrial radio listeners who are adults and business people and professionals, because I've always found the radio audience is smaller than the internet audience, but more active, and quite frankly, older. There are a lot of young people that are great activists, like this young man, looks like he's probably 20, 21 years old maybe 18, 19 years old. He looks very young. I'd say between 18 and 21. We'll see. And I just can't wait to have him on the show. And I'm going to have everybody else on the show that also engages in these feats. So, because listen, they shut the web down. They have the internet kill switch. They put this stuff into place. We're going to hang posters up and stuff we print up at our homes everywhere. We're going to get aggressive. We're going to engage in all sorts of things the French resistance and other resistance movements have done peacefully. And when things get really bad, folks will pay attention to posters even more than they would pay attention to, say, this show. That's why they have to shut the media down is because we have credibility now. The world government's admitted. The tyranny is admitted. The globalists cannot get away with this now. They hope we would just shut up and not build this system. But Drudge and Infowars and other outlets like Breitbart are there. And so we have a fighting chance. Let's play this clip of the type of censorship that's uh, happening uh, in Cuba, now happening in the U.S.
And Bob, as we heard the president say, I mean, this was about much more than a baseball game. What do you believe this day accomplished? Well, Lindsay, this was about more than just more than just more than just we have a moment here with a, a political demonstration uh, on our set. So let me throw it back now to the studio. And they drag him away, put him in a police car. And the reporters act like they like it. This is well, very fun. You, Bob Lee, obviously, is the most important. And then we have the rest of the footage where he's thrown in a police car to go Lord knows where. Then we have the footage of it happening here in America. Well, we're going to launch another operation now with big prizes to hang PDF posters up. Bill Clinton's a rapist and, and other things all over the country now because you arrested that young man or grabbed him. They've been running a giant con game that they control reality. And now they said the word mother and father can't be used. And now men can play on women's softball teams if they want and say they're a woman and can get scholarships and can compete in the Olympics. It's all just seeing how far they can push their agenda to control reality. And the people are fed up and they're dumb. And Nigel Farage of UKIP and the Brexit and Donald Trump here in the United States and the Tea Party and what Russia is doing and what Iceland is doing and what all these other countries are doing like Catalonia and Spain, is a manifestation of people wanting to be free. And you've made yourselves a laughing stock, saying that Pepe the Frog is racist. It's been around five years, nothing to do with racism. You've made yourselves laughing stocks, uh, you know, running around saying that we're Russian agents if we talk to WikiLeaks, when WikiLeaks has nothing to do with Russia. It just isn't working anymore. You're a laughing stock saying that. Snowden is a Russian agent. He was trying to get to South America. Same place Farage was trying to get to Paraguay, but he can only get to the embassy. That's the country they want to go to, not Russia. And the truth is, America has been captured by globalists and is setting up a classical police state. You know, this morning... I wanted to grab a clip of it, but my DVR wasn't working for some reason while I was working out. But it was uh, Bill Hemmer's show, I guess at like 8 in the morning. And there was a so-called conservative, Kristen Soltis Anderson on. And it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy to hear her say, well, yes, some people in the media have claimed, you know, that Hillary kind of stumbled in New York, but, you know, we all know that that's, you know, a, a diversion and, you know, why does Trump go there? And, you know, Trump shouldn't go there either on the infidelities, blah, blah, blah. I mean, Fox is so bad now that the Republican was putting out Democrat talking points and then they had this Democrat operative on the other side spewing total spin and at least Hemmer called her out on that. But I was watching an hour while I worked out. One time did Hemmer say something true or good. I mean, just to analyze media. Oh, you guys actually found the clip. How'd you do that? Well, if you can cue it up, that's great. It was like, I'm going to say it was like 8.18 when I was recording. It's like 18 minutes in. And the Democrat that was on there was like, it's wonderful that Hillary got caught on tape saying that Sanders people are basement dwellers and that are basically idiots and baristas. Because it's true, and she wants to help them. No, even Democrat websites like The Beast are saying, this shows her two-faced garbage. Because they have a disdain for all the people they've made poor. And if anybody made this generation of millennials one of the poorest on record, with one of the worst education futures, one of the darkest futures, a future in service, it would be... The Democratic Party. I mean, it is Hillary. It is Larry Summers. It is Bill Clinton that got rid of Glass-Steagall and allowed investment banks to create all the derivatives that we were then signed on to. They're the ones that created the housing bubble. They're the ones that put all the money into education uh, to give select loans out to then gouge everyone. I mean, they set this up. The Republicans were part of it. But my gosh, the Democrats brag they set all this up. They're the ones that set the scams up. They're the authors of it. So I'm so tired of watching ignorant millennials thinking Donald Trump's out to get them 
when what Donald Trump is pushing is one of the only hopes you've got of an upwardly mobile society for the average person. Highly intelligent, aggressive, hungry, hungry people will always be successful unless there's a you know, third world war. But the general public is going down. The demographics are going down. Everything's going down. You'd better innovate and you'd better want a free market. Because I want to tell Bernie Sanders people something. He talked about a lot of real issues, but his solutions were things that have never worked. Socialism and collectivism picks winners, creates combines, creates bosses. And the fact that Hillary thinks you're a moron and disdains you when Donald Trump's been reaching out to you from day one and the fact that Hillary, the WikiLeaks and DC Leaks show from two months ago, sent people dressed up like Bernie Sanders supporters paid for by MoveOn.org and George Soros to Trump rallies to be violent, to demonize Trump and to demonize Sanders and to make her look like the good person. The fact that you got chumped like that and it's admitted I don't know how on God's green earth you could ever not vote for Trump. He's got all the mega corporations against him. He's got all the billionaires against him. He's got all the big foreign governments and dictatorships against him. And you sit there running around in Austin and you name it in at rainbow flag events at gay pride marches bitching about Donald Trump running around screaming he's a homophobe when He's been criticized for conservatives for being the opposite. It's just asinine horse manure. And all I can say is, you are idiot morons, and you're never going to get out of your mother's basement if you don't wake up. I'm saying, if you don't wake up, you are a moron. You are a chump. I think you're not a moron. I think you're not a chump. But time will tell. Oh, I want to say something else. They're going to try to steal this election from Trump. He's way ahead. Just like I told you back at the RNC, he was way ahead. And then they came out and lied and said, oh, he's way behind. But the polls were so strong. He was 10, 15 points ahead. So they couldn't hide the fact that he was, you know, uh, dominating. They're out there saying he had a bad week. And oh, they're out there questioning him. And they're out there putting all this out. It's pure bull. It is to create the perception that he's a loser with the 20% that want to jump on a bandwagon and want to bet on a winner. And if people are dumb again and just vote for who they think the winner is going to be, you're idiots. And it's why we're in this position. And again, I'm not talking to our regular viewers, and our regular listeners. I'm talking to new people on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. People on Facebook mentions, people on Facebook uh, videos, people on Twitter Periscope, people on YouTube. There's never been a more clear election. There's never been such an obvious choice. There's never been the corrupt globalists that occupy this country in a parasitic relationship freaking out, throwing everything they've got against Donald Trump. And they found the clip somehow. I don't know how they did it. Uh, but here's the clip of uh, Kristen Soltis Anderson saying Hillary kind of stumbled. No, she fell on her face. And the fact that every channel says that she wobbled or stumbled from Fox to CNN still shows the control. You're not supposed to talk about her epilepsy. You're not supposed to talk about her aneurysms. You're not supposed to talk about Bill Clinton and rape. And if you do, they cut the feeds. And so that's why we maybe folks should also get up on TV and scream, Hillary Clinton fell down. She didn't stumble. Hillary Clinton passed out. She didn't stumble. They all cut the clip when she starts to wobble. And then don't show her fall on her face with her feet behind her, drug into the vehicle. That's deception. That's a media preying on people that still aren't online. But those of us that are online, seeing the raw video should be so angry that, that, that the media is so evil, folks, that they would do this. Let's play the clip. From Fox. Here it is from YouTube. Uh, well, you know, when Donald Trump was running in the primary, he made the case, look, I'm the only one that's going to have the guts to go there on some of these issues. So Republican voters knew what they were getting when they were picking Donald Trump. They knew that this was the sort of thing that might be on the table. But a poll out just this morning has 56 percent of voters saying they think it's inappropriate for Trump to bring up the affairs, including 62 percent of women. This is mm. just him talking about things that are not the issues that matter to most voters. And so as you were talking about uh, earlier, 
earlier, uh, it, when Trump is on the issues is, is when he's the best. You know, think about two weeks earlier when he began to retake ground from Hillary Clinton in the polls. It's because he wasn't in the headlines for any of these outrageous statements. I think by focusing on this, he risks making Hillary Clinton look like the victim okay. and putting right. her back in a yeah. place where voters Marianne, like her Marianne, does she defend herself on this or does she ignore it? What do you think her strategy should be? Well, I think it depends on the venue. I mean, if it's right now, I don't think she needs to say anything about it. But does he say something at the debate next Sunday? I think that's the question. And so when you look at Donald Trump, he's his whole candidacy is based on winning, and he's not right now. To Kristen's point, he's behind in the polls. He's uh, we know right, now that enough. he lost. Uh, again, there's a, there's a particular part. Find it, and we'll we'll play it later. That's the part I want to play. Where where she? Good job finding the clip though. Uh, where she says, you know, Hillary kind of stumbled. No, she fell on her face. And the point is, when you've got, as that clip just illustrated, the so-called Republican on the show bashing Trump the whole time, basically, and the Democrat even worse, it's not fair and balanced. And I'm telling you, since they took Fox over two months ago, it's getting worse every day. That's why they're coming after free and independent media, because they cannot have even a weak fox out there. They've got to have it basically be a Democrat operation. Now, speaking of what I mentioned earlier, here's that clip again of Cuba with a young man jumping up on ESPN talking about Liberda, bring down the Castro's. He's drug away, put in a police car, and the hosts are laughing and basically celebrating it. Then a young man jumps up on Fox this Saturday during Tucker Carlson and brings up the rape, gets drug away, and, and again, they've got the secret police, I guess. They're waiting this shows how far this country slipped. Here it is. And Bob, as we heard the president say, I mean, this was about much more than a baseball game. What do you believe this day accomplished? Well, Lindsay, this was about more than just more than just more than just. We have a moment here with a, a political demonstration uh, on our set. So let me throw it back now to the studio. And then he struck away and put the police well, the car. The safety of Bob Lee obviously is the most important. The safety, oh my gosh, some evil person wanted to have speech. We're just supposed to have everything nice and everybody loves Fidel Castro and the hundreds of thousands killed, the hundreds of thousands put in prison, their property taken. It's all okay, it's all cute, it's all nice. And now, in America, even on a Saturday morning show talking about dogs, somebody jumps up, talks about rape, he needs to contact us, he's going to win the 5,000. I, I called for this Friday uh, and this is what unfolds. He's drug away. We don't know where this young man is. He might have been dropped off right there. They might have let him go. They might have arrested him. He needs to get in contact with us so we know. There's a major lawsuit here uh, that they grabbed him and manhandled him for just showing the shirt behind the barricade. They committed the crime first, not him starting to climb over, I guess out of fear for his life. Here it is. <laughs> for this segment all morning long. We are rolling out the red carpet, not for Tucker, but for some adorable, <laughs> adoptable dogs. Every year, the Best Friends Animal Society helps cats and dogs who are stuck in animal shelters find us. Human heart. Yeah. It's a canine. That's the whole point of the segment, actually. <laughs> it's, 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 By the way, I like best friends. I like Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson was not involved in this with the New York Times call us again and ask if he was so they get him in trouble. Because anybody that talks about Bill Clinton and, and rape cases and rape allegations, but he settled cases before uh, of sexual assault, is fired, is kicked off, is banned. Roger Stone was banned off CNN, you name it. Notice you haven't seen him on Fox in about eight months for bringing up sexual impropriety. Then Trump brought it up on Hannity. Remember that? That's the only way to break this blockade. We're trying to break this blockade. It's a big deal. Now, they did find the part where Kristen Soltis Anderson talks about it's worse than the normal talking point that Hillary stumbled. That's what the other lady says. She says she had trouble getting out of her car. No, it was fell flat on her face having a convulsion. It's very clear. And unconscious is picked up and loaded in a vehicle. Okay? That's what's happening. And, and disappears before coughing fits for 45 minutes in a medical tent with a stretcher. We got that on video a week before in Cleveland. So uh, here's that footage. 
at all. Kristen, is she vulnerable on health? What's the effect of um, that there aspect was, of Trump's presentation, let's call it. So there was some polling that came out about two weeks ago around the time of the 9-11 the memorial when um, she did have some trouble sort of getting into the van where there were voters saying, look, I am concerned. I am concerned right, that, you know, there was lady, 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 it wasn't trouble getting in the van. She starts having a convulsion, classically, you can see her head going all over the place. She falls down her face. They can't pick her up. She, the dead weight, three people then drag her into the vehicle, sweetheart. Now, I know she knows that, but look at the unified control in media that they all say the same thing. That's how controlled this press is. If you ever needed evidence of it, it is controlled down to the specific things that you will not say and the talking points that you will say. And you've got her standing in, stepping in, in, an, in off and on for an hour, basically acting like a Democrat attacking Trump. This is who Fox is putting on now, who's pro-Trump. This is not fair and balanced. Fox News has been taken over. We'll be back. Don't forget, if you're a radio listener, you can get the new free app. It's got video feeds, uh, exclusive live feeds, text. We're going to have special news alerts and special events soon. The next few weeks, we're going to add more functions to it. So be sure and get the app. This is only phase one of InfoWars Live. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app to find the links to the Droid Store and to the App Store uh, with Apple, both in the free sections. It is our new app. We've got the classic audio and text app as well. Uh, that is also at InfoWars.com forward slash show. And that's where we'll be tonight starting off at about 2.30 Central. Uh, I'll be hosting. Paul Watson will be hosting. And we'll have some of the dedicated crew up here that's burning the candle at both ends. I can't wait till this election's over. It's exhilarating, it's exciting, but it's 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 very tiring. But I'm already waking up at 2, 3 in the morning wanting to work, so I thought, why not just go to bed about 8? And then why not just get up at about midnight and come on in? And, and uh, then I can go lift weights at about 5, 6 in the morning and uh, take the kids to school tomorrow. They always love it when I do that. They used to be homeschooled, now they're older, so they go to larger schools, they can be in sports. Uh, I think it's a great mix. People will say, you say you go to private school, I thought you were a homeschooler. Homeschooling, if you all you've got is that and not public schools, it, it it's all depends on the parents. A lot of churches are so big that they have a big community, and then your kids can be homeschooled. Uh, but then also, it's good to have them go to a big private school sometimes uh, so that they can have a wider uh, range of friends. But I am digressing. The point is, is that I'm going to have a long day tomorrow, I was going to take my son hunting for about a month, uh, bird hunting tomorrow evening and Wednesday. I was going to take off, but I, I just realized earlier this morning, I said, I can't do that now uh, because obviously the WikiLeaks situation, uh, that will have to come later. I have been working seven days a week. I'm not complaining. It's just that I'm totally dedicated to this because my son and my daughters have no future if we don't take action. That's why I want to thank you for your support. I want to thank our affiliates for their support. I want to thank the listeners for their prayers and your financial support. We sell amazing high-quality products, over a 1,000 items from crank and solar-powered shortwave radios to solar base station control units and solar panels of the highest quality at the lowest prices to the very best uh, probiotic out there, Biome Defense, at InfoWarsStore.com. And it is your purchase that funds everything we do. We could not do this and weather the storm and weather the attacks and uh, you can imagine what we go through without your prayers, without you spreading the word, and without you financially buying the products. And so we're introducing Biome Defense, the first ever probiotic from InfoWarsLife.com. Biome Defense by InfoWars Life is a superior blend of 50 billion live and active cultures from 23 different probiotic strains, which are known to support digestion and intestinal function. The experts agree that gut health plays a gigantic role in the normal function of your immune system and is essential for optimum health. Uh, yeah, it goes a lot further than that. Your gut is uh, home to over 100 million neurons, brain nanotransmitters, and is often called your second brain because of the direct link between the brain and the digestive system from the neurotransmitters. Get Biome Defense and Ultra Strength at InfoWars. Life.com. We're going to put out a lower strength. I just said, just go with the top strength. InfoWarsLife.com and start supercharging your gut health with our ultra high quality probiotic, Biome Defense. That's Biome Defense. 
And we also have a lot of other great specials. The InfoWars Solar Base Station Power Supply Unit, now 33% off retail at InfoWarsStore.com. We'll be back on the other side of this quick 70-second break with the huge news of Bill Clinton's real son. And we will also be taking your phone calls and a lot more. Thank you so much for joining us. We are 35 days out from this referendum against corporate world government, unelected government. I really feel sorry for people that are so ignorant, so brainwashed, so confused that they would not uh, support Donald J. Trump. I mean, Hillary Clinton does not give people tips. She does not let you look her in the eyes. She doesn't give people uh, that work for her Christmas presents. Uh, and of course, that's just the person she is individually. She loves killing Christians worldwide. She loves putting Al Qaeda and ISIS in control. She's a communist Chinese spy. They knew for a decade that they were taking massive amounts of blood out of the Arkansas prison system. They were the number one supplier to Bayer and producing factor eight blood product that every treatment had HIV and hepatitis in it, A, B, and C. Now, look up the Clinton blood scandal. It was on NBC News, ABC News. People went to prison at Bayer. They didn't. Because by the time it all came out in the 90s, they were the presidents, co-president. And by the way, the media makes fun of it when I call her co-president. They used to go, she was really co-president. Talking to Secret Service and others, and Hillary was more president than he was. She's already been in the White House for eight years. We already had a female president. I could care less if she was a woman, if she wasn't a monster. I'm telling you, folks, we're going to get judged. And if you don't believe in God, that's your issue. We're going to be judged if Hillary Clinton ends up getting into office. I'm telling you. And by judged, I mean she's going to start bigger wars. She's going to loot the economy. She wants poor people. She controls. She gets off on you being poor, living in your mother's basement. She gets off on you not having a car, air conditioning. So does Obama. These are eugenicists. These are globalists. They love you being poor and then being able to buy you for pennies. It's a dominance game. They're so twisted and so jealous and so envious. It's like twisted dominance that they don't want any competition. They hate good-looking people. They hate wealthy people. They hate successful people. They hate artists. That's who they are. I've studied their MO. I've talked to the experts. They concur. A truly dominant person wants to raise everybody up and empower people and build Valhalla or the fields of Elysium. A truly dominant person is so confident that they want to see you become greater than they are. That's the true mark and, is, and are ready to lay themselves down for innocence because chivalry just buoys up in them. And it's always been a competition between the chivalrous and the psychopathic. And the chivalrous won't go manipulate the masses until things get really, really dark. Then they rise to the occasion. And they don't manipulate them. They lead them. The problem is with high-tech systems, the psychopaths, the sociopaths have created a system where they've created masses of disconnected, domesticated people that aren't living in the real world who now think of the psychopaths and controllers as their mommies and daddies and hiss with hatred at those that are trying to build a better world and trying to lift up the general population. But the globalists want a giant, dumbed-down, massive, drooling, idiotic horde. And they've pretty much built it. They've created the crises. They've greased the skids. They have not let the crises go to waste. They have admittedly created a docile, mindless, thumb-sucking, snot-nosed, uh, psychopath guild beneath them now that that that, that has basically artificially uh, become them when i come back i'm going to nail this next segment i'm going to play hillary uh having disdain and being two-faced towards her minions uh sanders voters i'm going to get into i am bill clinton's son i am real uh there was no dna test and roger stone from eight months ago talking about it uh and more the exclusive inside scoop on that WikiLeaks and so much more coming up. It's a jam-packed second hour. Your calls. I'm Alex Jones. Spread the word. History's happening now. Alex Jones. Just during the break, I was out there in the control room, and Fox News had the headline, Clinton leads after first debate in polls. And I've gone out and looked at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different methodologies 
And Trump was leading in many scientific, but in hundreds of big online polls with millions of people where you can only vote once in many of them. But it doesn't matter because CNN came out and said she was 20 points ahead with a whole fake methodology. Sampling almost double the amount of Democrats they did Republicans. And then by today, a week later, it's everywhere that he lost hands down. He lost. Oh, but there's no coverage of the debate commission admitting that he was right that they turned his microphone off to the crowd. They couldn't hear him when he was talking, and it was really weird. And they were all, huh? Couldn't hear him. Just turned off to the crowd, and then they would fade it down whenever Lester Holt would start talking over him. I would notice, I really can't hear Trump all of a sudden. They were in there totally gaming it. They're totally discredited. But they've already gamed everything else. And you know they're gaming the new polls to create the perception he's losing. And Fox News is leading the charge of disinformation other than Fox and Friends and Sean Hannity. It is disgusting. There it is. Clinton leads in polls after first debate. Turd Blossom. That's what George Bush called him. Carl Rove, the guy that, you know, uh, just goes out and raises all the Republican money and then makes sure that the Republicans lose the elections. Talk about a wolf in sheep's clothing. He works for the family that calls the Clintons their, their son and Bill Clinton their brother. That's who that guy works for. And you know what? You blue blood Republicans want more of that? Good. The country's going to be over. You people are sick. Carl Rove is sick. I can't stand the fact that he lives in the same town as I do. Unbelievable carpetbagger. And I know he's from Alabama, folks. The point is, is the guy's not a Texan. I'm just so sick of whether you're from Kennebunkport, Maine, or you're from you're from Alabama down here, make, giving Texas a bad name. Be like if I went up to Alabama and did a bunch of bad stuff and said I was from Alabama. Just get the hell out of the state, Rove. Excuse me. Excuse me. Mm. By the way, I have a new article from Huffington Post. Bernie Sanders has responded to Hillary saying, we got people living in basements, people that are baristas. They want all this free stuff. Uh, because, you know, they don't see an economy. He's come out and said, I agree with that. In fact, let me give you the quote. Oh, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton is absolutely correct about my supporters, close quote. Clinton expressed uh, sympathy for Sanders supporters and uh, hacked audio from earlier this year. No, ladies and gentlemen. No. You know why this is disingenuous? Because Sanders was saying, you can have free health care and free education. All these billionaires don't pay taxes. What he didn't tell you is you can take all their money and it wouldn't pay for stuff for a year. Or that they're the ones that lobby to be tax exempt and are actually funding you and Hillary. All the billionaires, all of them, except for Gary Haven, uh, are giving money. That was in the Associated Press last week. All of them are giving to Hillary, nothing to Trump. You're like, oh, that rich guy. I've heard so many liberals on TV go, stuff's gotten really bad under this system. That's why we don't want Trump like he's been in office. You people are jokes. In fact, there's a new video out we've got. There's a new Mark Dice video we're going to get to as well. It's going to be a jam-packed hour. But since we mentioned that, um, we've got a report here where Washington's free beacon that got the audio, uh, Lachlan Marquet discusses a story he broke about leaked Clinton audio. Here it is. Some are new to politics completely. They're children of the Great Recession. And they are living in their parents' basement. Uh, they feel that they got their education and the jobs that are available to them are not at all what they envision for themselves. And they don't see much of a future. That's Hillary Clinton talking about Bernie Sanders supporters at a Virginia fundraiser back in February, recorded and apparently recovered from hacked emails. Joining me now, Lachlan Marquet, staff writer for the Washington Free Beacon, a conservative paper. That's where the audio first showed up. Where did it come from? Uh, it came from a website called DCLeaks.com, which is uh, suspected of having ties to Russian hackers that we've seen uh, intruding into all sorts of uh, political databases recently, DNC, uh, DCCC, and apparently uh, actually the, the account of a White House staffer who was volunteering on the Clinton campaign, which is where this email and the audio that was in it came from. Now, she said this during the primary when she was running against Bernie Sanders, and her campaign is saying this audio is taken out of context. How so? 
Well, you know, I think uh, it was clear that she was expressing some sympathy for these people she was saying live in their parents' basement. But I think it does reinforce, you know, it kind of sounds like a stereotype of millennials. And as a millennial, I can say we're sort of tired of being stereotyped. Um, and I think that's what is really going to irk some of Sanders' supporters. And these are people who she's still having trouble bringing into her camp. Only about half of Sanders' supporters, according to recent polls, say they're committed to voting for Hillary. Her going on the trail recently with Sanders has demonstrated that she thinks she needs that support. And this, uh, I think, is only going to exacerbate right, that's enough. Uh, now let's go to this other one. Daily Beast Jackie Kucinich actually tells the truth. I guess she'll probably get fired. Leaked audio shows Clinton is two-faced with Sanders supporters. Here it is. The Trump and campaign also this needs. idea that she's saying this to her friends behind closed doors to donors, just like basket of deplorables. Like she's putting huh. one face forward to Bernie Sanders supporters, saying, "Please come vote for me," mm -hmm. and then behind closed doors, being like, "Look at these kids." Right. So that 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 two faced um, it, it, um, appearance also is just it, it, yeah, that's that's hurtful. Basket of basket of deplorables, and again, I'm I'm coining the term the delusionals. Uh, I guess we're going to put a graphic out today. Uh, that uh, shows them as the delusionals, uh, some of the mainstream media reporters. Now, continuing here, uh, I want to go to another clip, and this deals with the story that's top of drudgereport.com. I am Bill Clinton's son, I am real, and there was no DNA test that's been confirmed. And of course, the person we're talking about is Danny Williams. And Roger Stone has talked a lot about this on air. A uh, man claiming to be Bill Clinton's illegitimate son via a prostitute continues to campaign to have the former president recognize him. We'll scroll through from the Daily Mail that basically scooped us uh, with the photos, with the history, with the background. Uh, because we were planning in the next few days to have a big data dump on this, but that's fine. I'm just glad the information uh, is coming out. Danny Williams, 30, claims he is the biological son of former President Bill Clinton. Uh, rumors of... Uh, about Clinton uh, were coming out while he was still governor of Arkansas. Danny's mother, Bobby Ann Williams, was a prostitute. She says she is certain Clinton is the father. He was her only white client at the time. In December, Danny set up a Facebook page reiterating his claim to be Clinton's son. The page also includes claims that Hillary banished him. And that is exactly what happened. Bill was giving him money and presents until he was, what, 14 years old or so. And uh, Hillary shut the whole thing down. Look for more with Mr. Williams in the next few days. Look for more. Um, there are reportedly going to be produced videos with him, you know, sit down interviews being put down uh, out into the media here in the next few days. So look for videos to be released in the next few days the first time actually seeing and hearing from Danny Williams. Look for that. And then look for Mr. Williams to be doing interviews live via television. So look for that in the next week. I'm just letting everybody know that. Uh, by the way, it should be any minute now, because Paul told me it was going to be two hours ago, about three hours ago. Uh, Infowars.com, there is a massive Libya story coming out with the former head of the Congressional Black Caucus coming out and saying he was in Libya, which he was on record with Gaddafi, and that Gaddafi was ready to stand down and leave unconditionally, but they wouldn't even let him get out of the country. They wanted him dead to make it a new Islamic state. They were going to make Libya the Islamic state, but they've since lost control of it, so they've moved to Syria. In fact, it did just go live, exclusive, Hillary killed by Hillary killed Libya peace deal over personal vendetta, claims whistleblower. Gaddafi agreed to hold free elections, but Clinton's refusal led to ISIS takeover. Yeah, I think Paul there, we've been working on this for two weeks, may have missed a key point. We're going to add it because this is really an Alex Jones, Paul Watson story. But Paul's a great guy, you know, hammering it out that they wanted a failed Islamic state and she also wanted to kill him because she does like to kill world leaders and is a killer. So it is a personal vendetta. That part's accurate. But they also wanted the Islamic State. Saudi Arabia wanted that. And so that was part of the deal. But again, that exclusive has gone live at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Yeah, it's up there on the site right now. Uh, exclusive Hillary killed peace deal over personal vendetta claims whistleblower. And, and I mean, I would add claims former head of Congressional Black Caucus. There's a bunch of other witnesses, too. But the forest gets lost for the trees about those people.
The story here is the former head of the Congressional Black Caucus, Mr. Fauntleroy, came out and said that and broke that down. We're going to go to break. When I come back, I'm going to play a clip from January of Roger Stone here on the air with us talking about Danny Williams, who's now 30. And talking about the fact that they went and checked, there is no DNA test. When this first came out in the mid-1990s, they said, oh, there was a DNA test. He wasn't the child. None of that is true. And so we're going to force Bill Clinton and Hillary to talk about this. And this is going to open up the prostitutes. It's going to open up not taking care of kids. It's going to open up him uh, saying, Black Lives Matter unless it's your son. This is a big deal. And this is an October surprise, one of many. But this Libya story is big 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 and there's going to be more in the next week coming out on this front as well so stay tuned for all of this and more i'm alex jones infowars.com is the news site obviously this is an incredible time to be alive i've got more on wikileaks set to release the big data dump at 3 a.m central 4 a.m eastern we're going to be live on air with a video and audio feed at InfoWars.com starting tonight at 2.30 a.m. I was raised a Democrat. And see, I didn't know your story, but I think for all of us, it's humanizing it. How you get to the point of this powerful speech that goes worldwide and wakes up so many people, I just, uh, I just knew it would be very interesting. So when Trump talks about the lies that the Democrat Party has told. By the way... This is part one of articles. I'm going to have to stay up tonight and write one myself. And I'm not blaming Paul. He's a superstar. He does a great job. We've been on the phone with former leader of the Congressional Black Caucus. He's the source of the story confirming all this. We got a bunch of documents backing it up from this Christian missionary. But the media will just try to demonize that and spin it. We have the congressman, the, the leader of the Congressional Black Caucus at the time, who was there with Gaddafi when he was ready to completely stand down and give up, and the State Department said no, and they were on the phone with Hillary Clinton. That's who we have. That's who's in this story. But I guess we went with part one that doesn't even mention it. This is a disaster. And I'll just say it on air. You know, I'm in a total war against these people. Anyways, and I just, I just cannot stand it. Anyways. Let's go to the clip of Roger Stone here talking about what happened and what's been unfolding with the son, Danny, 30-year-old son, Danny Williams, a Bill Clinton that I've been covering for 20 years. It's a fact. I've talked to the state troopers. I've talked to everybody. I think I interviewed his aunt 20 years ago, but she's coming on the show. He's, he's coming on the show. The bottom line is the Clintons are pure evil, and we have to defeat them. We have to stop them. And I have so much energy right now. I don't even know what to say to everybody. I, I'm just so sick of it all. And watching Bernie Sanders get up there and say, it's true, my supporters do live in their mommy's basements and are nothing but baristas and shouldn't think they're going to get a bunch of free stuff, even though it's what I dangled in front of them. Piece of filth. God, he's such a con man. He knows he's a con man. It doesn't matter. You're going to get Hillary elected, you Sanders supporters. You'll make it look plausible when she steals the election. That's what you want. You want to be losers. You want to be failures. You love being conned. How dare Paul not add it in this part of the article with the congressman? Joking. Paul's doing a great job. I'm just frustrated because we have all this data from the congressman, and all these other documents, and that was supposed to be in this report. I guess we'll, we'll call this part one, but the headline should be former head of black congressional caucus, pictures of him with Gaddafi, who was there on record, said Gaddafi was ready to stand down and Hillary said no. And he's a Democrat trying to plead with her. Well, why not? This is sensational. Fauntleroy, he's coming on. He wants to come on Monday. We got to get him on sooner. 35 days out from the big kahuna, folks. The big, juicy, mega enchilada. The enchilada supremo grande. The November 8th election, only 35 days, fleeting days left. Let's go ahead and play a clip of Roger Stone as we go out to break.
Uh, the most egregious thing to me here is the fact that the mainstream media lets Hillary run around saying Black Lives Matter, but they don't address the question of Bill's abandoned, rejected, mixed race son, Danny Williams. Danny Williams is a fine young man, Alex. He's 30 years old. He's a church goer. He's built a small business, put himself through college, but he is the son of Bill Clinton. His mother was Bobby Ann Williams, uh, a cocaine addicted prostitute that Bill hired on several occasions to pleasure him. Uh, he, we know for a fact that Danny is Bill's son because Bobby Ann tells us she had not been with any other Caucasian gentleman. Uh, and uh, in 1999, the star, owned by Robert Altman, a Bush crony, friend of Bill, college classmate of Bill in Georgetown, undersecretary of the treasury, a guy who's given over a half million to the various Clinton political and financial escapades, he owns the star. They write that they have a DNA test that absolves Bill. Alex, I went to the current owners of the star. They were gracious in opening their files. There is no DNA test. Danny Williams is Bill's son, banished by Hillary. It's Hillary who told his mother and his aunt that they'd be arrested if they came around. It's Hillary who puts a private detective on silencing the rumors uh, about Bill's illegitimate son. It's time for the Clintons to do the right thing. Acknowledge, love, cherish, nurture your son. All right, we're going to be right back. Walter E. Fontroy, leader of the Black Congressional Congress, as soon as he tried to expose this, they tried all these fake indictments and went after him and all the rest of it. I mean, he's, by the way, fearing for his life in basically hiding right now uh, with all of this. This is getting crazier and crazier by the minute. That report's up on Infowars.com. Stay with us. There is a very important report. Exclusive Hillary Clinton killed Libya peace deal over personal vendetta, claims whistleblower. The documents, the photographs are there. I remember at the time hearing that Gaddafi was trying to unconditionally surrender. And she created a failed state. She bragged about it. I came, I saw, he died. Very, very credible report. We've spent a month basically vetting it. It's up on Infowars.com. A part two is coming. Paul Watson did a great job putting this out. Appreciate his tireless work. Appreciate the entire crew's tireless work. Speaking of tireless work, tonight, starting at 2.30 a.m., that's 3.30 Pacific, 3.30 That'll be, uh, what, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, 1.30 Mountain, 12.30 Pacific. We will be breaking down the WikiLeaks announcement that is set for, again, 3 a.m. Central Time. So about 30 minutes before that announcement starts, we're going to be on air, ferreting around, working on getting the feed from this conference in Germany. And then as the WikiLeaks information breaks, we're going to be giving live analysis and writing articles in real time, myself and Paul Watson from London, England, and whoever else from the crew wants to come in during the middle of the night and cover this with us. The energy in the air, the energy politically worldwide it's quite frankly more than I can handle right now. I am having trouble sleeping, something I've never had trouble doing. I've even cut back on caffeine. It's not helping. Uh, I am more aggressive, as you can notice on air. I am bouncing off the walls. Uh, and everybody else is, basically. I mean, we've got Bill Clinton's real son coming out in the news. Uh, we've got WikiLeaks about to break. Uh, we've got people climbing on national TV screaming Bill Clinton's a rapist and then being grabbed. Uh, we have just got Black Lives Matter vandalizing Trump facilities and beating up Trump supporters and attacking their houses all over the country and the quote liberal media won't cover it because they're all about intimidation. They love it. They're thugs. They love using the IRS on Christians and conservatives and patriots and veterans groups and they're bullies. So desperate times mean desperate measures. We need to be peaceful. We need to be nonviolent, but we need to be extremely innovative and extremely aggressive and savage when it comes to taking action because this is a war this is the great war of the 21st century, a technological, technotronic information war to try to bring the United States down. That is what's happening. And Paul Watson has texted me, I'd scanned over, and I had printed an earlier version, 
and uh, that the congressman was in there. See, he's just so perfect. He, he, he's, he's on top of it. That's why we all love Paul Watson. Paul Watson, I'm on air sending you a voice memo. Great job. I think when it printed, it didn't print at all. And so that's why I was flipping out. But it wasn't about you. It was just the over maximus maximization of energy and just the explosive nature of the times we're in, my friend. And I'll be talking to you after the show today, obviously, and look forward to our overnight transmission with the WikiLeaks. Mm -hmm. In fact, let me just let me just do something here for just a moment. Let me just reset because I am really um about to explode here on air. I had one glass of iced tea this morning, of weak iced tea. I never drink iced tea in the morning, but I thought, I'm not going to drink coffee. I'm not going to drink anything that's caffeinated. I'm not going to take um, a brain force, which has some uramate in it, but not much. I mean, it, it's not what really gives you the energy, but I still can't even handle it right now. And I'm going to not be on any caffeine today. And I feel like I am on speed. I mean, that's how much energy is on is in the air right now. I am absolutely bouncing off the walls. And no wonder I'm bouncing off the walls. Look at what's happening. Look at what's unfolding. Look at where we are as a culture and a society. Look at these headlines. This is mainstream news. It's up on Infowars.com. And by mainstream news, it's been mentioned in mainstream news. This is going on, and this is in the WikiLeaks. And this is what Hillary wanted to do? WikiLeaks, Hillary Clinton proposed killing Assange with drone strike. This is confirmed. Murdering journalists. They've already got folks trying to break in. They've already got folks uh, trying to get into the building where he is uh, there in London. Democrat presidential candidate calls for assassination of whistleblower with no due process. Report claims. Democrat presidential candidate... Clinton once proposed using a military drone strike to extrajudicially assassinate WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, a document published by the organization states. The screenshot tweeted Monday cites a report by the true pundit. That's what's coming out tomorrow, part of it. Claimed in 2010, the State Department explored ways to suppress the troublemaking Assange before he could publish damaging information on conversations between State Department personnel and its foreign assets and allies. Now you wonder why Assange says she wants to put all of our necks in a noose? Now you wonder why Assange is out to get Hillary? <laughs> Imagine what's coming out tomorrow. I'm told it dwarfs this. Can't we just drone this guy? Clinton openly inquired. While WikiLeaks has not confirmed the veracity of the report, the Washington Examiner notes that during the same time the State Department was involved in the discussion of what non-legal methods were available to subdue Assange, emails previously released from the Clinton private email server, and Marie Slaughter, a former deputy uh, director of policy and planning for the State Department, sent an email on the same day in 2010 on the subject of possible non-legal strategies. That's confirmed. Killing him for dealing with WikiLeaks. The email also notes that a meeting was held that day to discuss WikiLeaks, reports the Washington Examiner. And it goes from there. That story's up on Infowars.com. So it's confirmed. They talked about non-legal measures, and now it's coming out. Drone strike on Assange, and someone's already tried to climb the building, the embassy he's in, to kill him. So that's huge. We also have a Roger Stone article on it, posted up on Infowars.com. So that's the type of monster we're talking about. And I guess that's what liberals want to hitch their little wagons to, is someone that claims they're this loving, liberal person that loves free speech. Her cohort, Obama, has persecuted the press more than anyone in modern history in the United States. Hillary's a close second with Bill. There's a trail of death behind them. They stole 94-plus percent of all the money that was given for the children in Haiti, who are about to get hit by another giant hurricane. God bless them. And they've deforested almost all of us. There's going to be giant hellish mudslides. Pray for those poor people. She stole almost 95% of the money, 94 plus percent. And it goes on and on from there. And now she wants to kill liberal journalists, real liberals that were against war, against the NSA spying, against Bush. 
She wants to kill someone that you people love to claim you are. The truth is you're in a gang, just like Nazis were in a gang. You want to believe you're on the winning team. You think you have all the answers when what you are is reprobate, empty, horrible people. This makes my head spin. Now, I've got other stuff I want to get to. I want to play uh, the latest Mark Dice video. The latest Mark Dice video is par for the course, and it illustrates the fact that if you especially go to areas of Southern California, these people are living on another planet. They want to put the majority of gun owners in forced labor camps. They want to kill us. They want Hillary to be a dictator, you name it. There's new video. Hillary supporters signed petition to allow illegal immigrants to vote in presidential election to stop Donald Trump. And you may think this is shocking. Almost all of them agreed. The Democrats had a bill that failed narrowly to let illegals vote in California. They've done the same thing in Illinois and other states. Now, they'll say, well, that's racist if you don't. So I can go to Mexico or China and vote? Well, China doesn't have voting, so it doesn't matter. So that's how crazy this has gotten. That's how upside down this has become. Here's Mark Dice's latest report. Quick signature to support the illegal aliens to help them be able to vote this election. Sure. Just trying to stop Donald Trump any way we can. So by getting the illegal aliens, you yeah, birth. To print? Okay, you can print there then, I guess. Just trying to get the illegal aliens allowed to vote this election to stop Donald Trump. So we figure desperate times call for desperate measures. Thank you for supporting that. Will you support the undocumented immigrants and let them vote this election? We're oh, just yeah, of course. we're trying to get as many liberals on the voter registrar as possible. So, 15 or 20 million undocumented immigrants. If we can help them vote, birthday signature to support the illegal aliens. They've they've lived here. They have driver's licenses, and so. It's kind of discriminatory to not allow them to vote in the election, wouldn't you yeah, agree? I agree. I definitely agree. The <laughs> fact that uh, the election has a lot to do with, with them, it, they should probably have a say. I agree with that. In the election, so. To help the Mexicans be able to vote in the election this year, we're trying to get the illegal immigrants to be allowed to vote in the election to stop Donald Trump. So we just needed a few more signatures. Will you help out, help out with that? A name, birthday, and a signature to support that. For the illegal immigrants to get on the voter registration ballots to help stop Donald Trump. So just, yeah, print there, birthday, and a signature to allow the illegal aliens to get registered to vote this presidential election. Birthday, thank you. There's uh, maybe 15 million of them, and if we can get all those illegal immigrants to get registered to vote, then... We could maybe stop Donald Trump. Okay. So thank you so much. Of course. We want to just make sure that all the illegal aliens that are here not only stay, but can can vote in the election just to help participate in the political process. So will you help the undocumented immigrants be able to vote this election? Just a Why not? print birth date signature. Only if they don't vote for Trump, can I guarantee that? Well, no, none of them are. If we can get the, the Mexicans to be able to vote in this election, we can definitely stop Donald Trump. So 15 million undocumented immigrants, we're going to get them registered to vote. Cool. Thank you for that. Good job. You know, with 10 to 15 million illegal aliens in America, if we can allow them to vote in this election, that'll really help out with our agenda. So... Appreciate you supporting the petition to, yeah, sure. to endorse that. We just want to make sure that those 15 million people can participate in the election this time around. So uh, appreciate your me. support. Yeah, yeah bir birth date signature. To, I don't know if you can read this, though. Well, it'll just be counted as another signature. We're going to be sending this off to Washington, and then hopefully we can get those 15 million illegal aliens to be able to vote this election. Nice. They live here, and we need to we need to have them voting. So, hey, help the Mexicans be able to vote in this election. The <laughs> well, I've seen this before. Who's recording? Oh, I like right, right there, over, right over there, actually. Awesome. Yeah, good for you, man. Thanks right. for thinking, bro. <laughs> Appreciate right. that. I like what you do, man. Oh, thank you.
Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel at youtube.com slash Mark Dice and stay tuned. New videos. New videos almost every week, I think is what he says. Absolutely, Mark Dice doing a great job. I'm so honored to have him as a contributor and to see him just get better and better and mature and get like fine wine, uh, just more amazing as time goes on, just like Paul Watson, just like Rob Dew, just like Darren McBreen, just like all the rest of the amazing crew here from Leanne McAdoo to David Knight to Merkel Thalen to Don Salazar to Kit Daniels to Kellen McBreen to the crew back here. The real superstars at InfoWars are the Nico Acostas and everybody else back there. I try to thank everybody. It'd take an hour that really are kicking butt and working so hard to bring you this information. And they're the folks that'll be here tonight. I, I said, whoever wants to volunteer, and I got a lot of people that want to volunteer to come in and start working at 2 a.m. We'll go live at 2.30 Central, and then we'll have the WikiLeaks announcement sometime after 3 a.m. And Paul Watson and I will give uh, analysis of that information. Then I'll let Paul Watson go so that we can have some of the first articles out dealing with this, because this is an info war. They've already got their pre-spin ready. They know what was in her 33,000 deleted emails. They know the different things that Assange is going to be going after. And remember, she even called for a drone strike. So the word is, and I'm just going to let you know this now, Julian Assange has recorded hours of everything that's in the documents. It's already been given to independent media. Not us. I would be very honored, but not us. It's very dangerous. So in a way, I'm like, thank God, please don't. But it's my duty. I'll do it if I got it. But I'm like, it's not us. But but they can't kill him because he's already got recordings. He's already got the documents. It's already in multiple nations. It's already been distributed to more than 20 different organizations and people and groups. Uh, and so he's going to do a live video breakdown of some of the top crimes and incredible things so that he can break it and basically state what what it's really doing instead of them trying to spin it. Because if you just put the documents out, they'll spin it. So we're going to be there live time with Assange as well, breaking this down, going with our spin, you could say. I mean, everybody sees through road colors, glasses. Everybody distorts things to a certain point. But we try to tell the truth. The mainstream media is going to be distorting by design, on purpose, lying to everybody. And I'm not putting up with it. Now, we're going to go to break, and I'm going to come back and start opening the phones up until 1.30 Central, about an hour and 15 minutes from now, when Roger Stone breaks us, uh, uh, joins us breaking massive amounts of news. Uh, I personally am going to try to settle down a little bit because I'm not somebody that chokes when history's happening. I'm somebody that rises to the occasion, but sometimes too far. You know, it's like having Matt Drudge just show up here, almost had a heart attack. I mean, I, I don't mean literally, but I can hardly talk. Or Donald Trump coming on, knowing how historic it would be. It's just amazing. It's amazing to be here with you. It's amazing to be fighting this evil. Uh, it's scary, but it's something we've all got to do together. So I am extremely honored to be here with you. We are the deplorables. We've got the new graphic. We're tweeting it out right now at Real Alex Jones. They, ladies and gentlemen are the delusionals. They are a little head on a stick, bobbleheads of the establishment. And there's a new graphic we're tweeting out at Real Alex Jones right now. Please tweet it to everyone you know. 96% of Americans do not trust the mainstream media. AP study, the delusionals, they are the only ones that believe their BS. Very, very powerful. And it doesn't even have an Infowars.com on it because we put it out like that because a lot of other news sites won't spread something or other conservative sites or libertarian sites uh, won't, won't spread something if they think uh, it promotes another site. I don't care. Use it. Repost it. Do whatever you want. I just want to save the country. I'm skipping the break. I can't help it. I just want to defeat the Clintons. And I, and I realize that's what it is. I've never been this cliffhanger in my life. I mean, I guess it's what it's like if your kid's in emergency surgery and you don't know if it's going to die or not. What that must be like. I thank God I've never been in that position, but I don't know. 35 days of this. I mean, Hillary's evil, people. There's no way you can support her. I don't know how these ignorant people out there don't know the evil we're up against. We've got Russia threatening war again. We've got Congress trying to tell the Pentagon, along with Obama, to get ready for war. We've got them saying, shoot down Russian airplanes. That's being promoted. That's what it is. 
That's what it is. That's why it's so over the top what's going on. It's so obvious that the Clintons need to be arrested and Obama needs to be arrested. It's for supporting radical Islam, attacking Russia, Europe, us, the Middle East. It's so obvious these people are pure evil. George Soros is a freaking lunatic, man. George Soros, Google it. I'm going to do a piece on this. I remember reading the, the, these writings in a magazine. I went and Googled it like a month ago and meant to do a whole piece on it where he said, I believed I was a Messiah and still do, but I didn't want to tell people when I was a young man that I was the Messiah because they might lock me up. Exactly, exactly. You're no, here's a little cl clue. When you're rounding up fellow Jews by the thousands, when you're 15 years old and leading the Nazis to them and a spy finding where Jews are hidden in Eastern Europe with your father, you're not the Messiah. Here's a little clue for you, crazy man. I just cannot believe it. It is crazy. It is crazy. It is crazy. Let me tell you something. It isn't hard to know which side to pick when the government run by foreign criminals is spending hundreds of millions of dollars a quarter. The Ford Foundation, the Carnegie Endowment, Soros Group, to actually fund, to actually fund rioting and killing police. That's what they want to destabilize the whole country. People say, well, what's this kissing the police butt all of a sudden? All of a sudden, I was trying to keep the police from being globalized and federalized because they would be our oppressors. And now to get rid of the police we have, they're just going to terrorize them until they quit and put their social justice warriors in, run by the UN. I'm fighting the same fight I was always fighting. But over the years, the enemy's positions change and how they're manipulating change, and we change to oppose each front of that battle. But I was never against local government. I was never a hateful of the average police officer. I knew it was a tough job, and a lot of really good men and women were involved in it. We were always supportive of good police officers. We've been unsupportive of them being turned into revenue-generating Gestapo, which they haven't been completely turned into yet. That's why we're in a battle for our country, for our police, for our children, for our culture, for our rights to religion and private property and everything else. We're in a total war. This is, this is as important as World War II, people, because it's a creeping death propaganda war. That's why it's so important. It's almost an abomination to just be up here on air calmly talking about this. I saw some ad this morning on Fox called The Fanatics. It's, it's, it's like a website. Maybe we can find it online, Fanatics ads. And, it, and it's made to look like a movie, you know, a, 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 a video, home movie shot with like a VHS. You can tell it's fake because it's shot to look really crappy. Nobody's had cameras like that for 15 years. And the guy's screaming and yelling when his team wins. He pulls his clothes off and runs through the street screaming. You're supposed to run through the streets screaming when an enemy's invading or taking over like Paul Revere. You're not supposed to do it because you're a dumbass team. The Eagles won. It was an ad to make you buy a jersey and to punch your emotions for war over some simulated crap over some football team. And so, really, I'm like a crazy fan of the football game right now that's painted up green, you know, foaming at the mouth because, man, you're supposed to foam at the mouth when hardcore, sneaky, evil demons like Hillary Clinton are taking over your country, your civilization. They're out to break your families. They're out to get your guns, bitter clingers. They're out to absolutely turn us into slaves. They're making fun of us. They enjoy killing Christians. And my very essence, I guess my spirit, is just rising right now to an uncontrolled level. I almost just rip my shirt and jacket off right now and go crazy because what's happening is, is, is so epic and we need to just absolutely throw these people off of us and defeat them and turn the criminal tide and reverse this. Now, I'm going to stop and I'm going to say something right now. Uh, we've got a solar panel system that we sell that's excellent. Uh, that has a great control unit. It's one of the latest designs, very affordable. Uh, it is 33% off. We're, we've never really run a special on it. The InfoWars Solar Base Station Power Supply, now 33% off. Retail at InfoWarsStore.com. From our research, the InfoWars Store Base Station 
supply system is the most affordable and high-powered solar generator out there. And now we're giving you 33% off this solar base station at InfoWarsStore.com to help you get prepared while supplies last. The InfoWars solar base station has a unique lithium-ion uh, phosphate battery and will last up to eight times longer than your typical unit. One unit provides 1,500 watts of continuous power and 3,000 watts of peak power for any emergency. This solar supply system is the real deal, and we're giving it to you at the lowest price possible. We've done the research, and this is one of the best emergency power backups out there. Get the InfoWars Solar Base Station for the lowest price ever, 33% off. InfoWarsStore.com today while supplies last. That's InfoWarsStore.com. Also, we are introducing seven years in the making. That's two years before we even got into nutraceuticals. This is being developed. It's off the new pharmaceutical-grade system they're doing in Europe. The way it's delivered, the 50 million strains, the 23 uh, probiotic uh, strains, the 50 billion live cultures. It's amazing. It's got the enzymes with it to fuel the uh, good microbes, the good gut flora. Biome Defense, InfoWarsLife.com is the sub page of InfoWarsStore.com that takes you right to the high quality nutraceuticals. InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com. Check it out today, along with the 30 other InfoWars Life products, like the oil of oregano that is the most organic Mediterranean style ever. People are raving about that. I never even plug it. Uh, people say they take that with the oxy powder. They take that with the natural defense. Uh, and it just absolutely changes uh, their, their lives. InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And uh, finally, InfoWarsTeam.com is where you can find the entire longevity line. That's hundreds of great products discounted at InfoWarsTeam.com. When you sign up uh, for auto ship, you can get free shipping. Sign up as a distributor and get 30% off and other specials. The lowest uh, prices you're going to find anywhere for longevity products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and so many other great products are at InfoWarsTeam.com. InfoWarsTeam.com or 888-789-9277. We'll be back with the third hour. See if I can settle down, focus, and cover the news. But I'm on fire. America's on fire. The world's on fire. Stay with us. I'm psychoanalyzing myself right now and the rest of the country for that matter. Because I've never felt so much energy in my life. I feel more energy right now than when I was, say, 12 years old. And some bully who'd flunked three grades and weighed 70 pounds more than me was going to be waiting for me when I got off the school bus to walk a mile to my house because the school bus didn't go to up the big hill uh, where I lived in a neighborhood. So I had to walk about a mile and sometimes, you know, the bully would be waiting. I have more energy than I did riding home on the school bus. And I think everybody else feels that energy right now. I mean, I'll get up in the morning at like 6 a.m. and I'm angry that I'm not doing enough. I'm angry I'm not putting out enough stories. I'm angry I'm not chronicling all the crimes of the Clintons properly and reaching out to people and coming up with that idea that will move the lever that will change the world. Now, I don't know if I can find that lever, but I know if all of us tried together in the next 34 and a half days, we can do it. Look at DrudgeReport.com right now. I am Bill Clinton's son. I am real. I want to meet my dad. Set for his first TV interview. There was no DNA test. Let's see where he's set for his first TV interview. Uh, Drudge is linked to our YouTube. Hmm, what does Drudge know? Again, I can give you the scoop here. There are going to be some taped interviews with him coming out in the next few days. And then we'll see. Who knows where we'll hear from uh, Mr. Clinton's son, and I, I believe that Danny Williams, 30 years old, is his son. Now, I want to take some phone calls specifically on what do you think is in WikiLeaks? What do you think is going to drop tomorrow? Obviously, the confirmation of Hillary's plan to have a drone strike, that was already in other leaks that they confirmed were real, where they said, we need to go with illegal means. And if you don't think the Clintons don't kill people, <laughs> you don't think Count Dracula sucks blood. Or that Easter bunnies hop around and got pink ears. Um, they absolutely are killers. And I think that's part of this, too. I realize I've really crossed a line with these people. 
you know, there's kind of a psychological psychic demarcation line this weekend where I just said, you know what? I don't care. I'm going all the way like a maniac. I mean, let me tell you something. It's a maniac move to say $100,000, $5,000 each person that gets on national TV yelling Bill Clinton's a rapist. And I'm not up here trying to impress everybody. But let me tell you something. I am committed 100%. Let me tell you, it feels good. It feels too good, though. I mean, this is, this is insane. No drugs, no alcohol, no nothing. I feel high as a kite right now. And I just wonder what comes next. You know what? I think the energy level is so high. Here's a question for listeners. Are they going to stage a big false flag? Will this, that's the big question. Will WikiLeaks actually leak info tomorrow? Or will it be some of the weaker stuff ahead of an even bigger data dump? Or will Assange get killed? Will the whole building blow up and they just say it was a gas line, but it's really a hellfire missile? I mean, the sky's the limit. They'll do anything. They've already committed so many crimes. They've already got the FBI and Justice Department behind them. They've already got MI6 behind them. Is there no level they won't go to? Flashbacks. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange claims she'll be killed by CIA drone if he leaves embassy. And now we have it confirmed from the emails saying we'll use illegal means to kill him. And then Hillary says, how about a drone? But look at DrudgeReport.com. I am Bill Clinton's son. I am real. I want to meet my dad. Set for his first TV interview. Yes. He's done TV interviews. Let's just leave it at that. Videos, those are going to be coming out. I want to meet my dad. That's the Daily Mail. So it's all coming, the October surprises. And don't worry, Hillary's got her October surprises. What could those be? 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Those are the questions. I'll take your calls coming up. But first, a video report destroying... Obamacare, which is also hung around Hillary's head. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live, broadcasting worldwide. It's already October 3rd, 2016. I've got this piece that Rob Dew put together, breaking down how ridiculously corrupt Obamacare is. Then we're going to go to your phone calls, and Roger Stone's joining us. But understand, we are only 35 days, in fact, it's less than that out, from this election that really decides to a great extent the fate of how this war against the New World Order is going to go. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Here he is, the piece on Obamacare. Obamacare is great, and it's really working. Sign up now. You'll be able to keep your health care plan. If you like your plan, you keep your plan. If you like your doctor, you like your plan, you can keep your doctor, you can keep your plan. The things I'm the most proud of were the more serious speeches, I think. Health care, um, uh, economic speeches and i think I love it wrote the line about um if you like your insurance you can keep it you like your current insurance you keep that insurance people who knew the law as it was being written knew the president wasn't telling the truth and frankly they wrote a regulation intentionally trying to get people out of the individual market well, in they the want the people to go into the exchanges the whole point of the exchanges is to close down the individual insurance market the over insurance, time. Com the insurance companies don't like the individual market as it's constructed they see the future that individual market is going away they don't want to invest in it third largest health insurance company in the United States is pulling its plans from 70% of the Obamacare insurance exchanges it participates in. Aetna saying it will only list its plans in Delaware, Iowa, Nebraska, and Virginia next year. Joining us is Zeke Emanuel. He is one of the architects of Obamacare, and every time he joins us, he smiles. I've seen you so many times smile your way through this failure. I am insisting on having my say. 17 states have well, then you don't need me. You don't coverages. need me in the studio. If you want your stay, you don't need me in the studio. If you want me That's to answer your true, time, but I'm that waiting premiums for the apology, have gone which up. I'm not going to get. So tell me, how do you explain get. there are five states with one health care coverage, and there are 17 states with this one or two? That's accurate, isn't it? Let, let me explain something. First of all, <laughs> we will start by reducing premiums by as much as $2,500 per family. I also have a health care plan that would save the average family $2,500 on their premiums. And if you already have health care, then we're going to reduce costs uh, an average of $2,500 per family on premiums. 
And you know what? It's so true. No. Yeah. What's the White House saying about the huge increases in premium costs for consumers? We got sacked really hard. We, we couldn't afford health insurance. Tried to get on Obamacare, couldn't afford it. So we got a huge penalty this year. On, and so... Yeah, I'm ready for a change. A recent survey of 148 insurance brokers shows Obamacare sending premiums rising at a faster clip than in recent memory. Uh, I got my fine just like her in the taxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act, it skyrocketed the price of health care, and it's made care so much harder to find. I fractured two discs in my back in the military, and the VA insurance coverage that I have from that is not even enough to satisfy the IRS insurance mandates. So I, had to get, I got to pay a fine for that. And I've seen it with my parents, too. Their insurance has gone down a lot. My dad, he's paying over $300 a month now for heart medication. That used to be like his yearly total for his copay. And their deductibles have gone up. I don't know anyone who's saved money with uh, Obamacare. $100 out of each check, and then $500 penalties, and then it goes up from there. Upwards of $5,000 a year. They'll just take it out of your account. And then it gets rid of a lot of the charity care that was already there, lets the insurance companies lower the standard of care. And the Supreme Court ruled and said, yes, it's a tax, and the IRS will enforce it. And the fight is over Obamacare. Drudge taking to Twitter to make that announcement. Just paid the Obamacare penalty for not getting covered. I'm calling it a liberty tax. But a White House representative firing back, tweeting, flat lie, no fee for previous years. Scary how much influence he once had. As you know, the individual mandate in the bill contains a tax penalty for anyone who does not purchase health insurance. Let me now read to you from the bill how that penalty is enforced. One, in general, the penalty provided by this section shall be paid upon notice and demand by the secretary and except as provided in paragraph two shall be assessed and collected in the same manner as an assessable penalty under subchapter B of chapter 68. Now, new data from the IRS reveals that in 2014, over 8 million Americans paid a staggering $1.7 billion in Obamacare penalties and we know that that number is expected to be even higher much higher in 2015 2016 and beyond professor gruber uh, what did you mean when you said they proposed it and that passed because the american people are too stupid to understand the difference when i said that i was at an academic conference being glib and quite frankly trying to make myself, make myself seem smart by insulting others. Are you offering the venue as a defense uh, for, uh, for saying it or for meaning it? Please. What did you mean when you said it was a very basic exploitation of the lack of economic understanding of the American voter? What did you mean by that? Once again, it's another example of my inexcusable arrogance in trying to insult others to make myself seem smarter. Um, what did you mean when you said you wish that you had been able to be transparent, but you'd rather have the law than not. Lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. And, you know, it's the second best argument. Look, I wish Mark was right. We can make it all transparent. But I'd rather have this law than not. Welcome to the State Department. I think we have some interns in the back. Welcome. Uh, good to see you in this uh, exercise in transparency and democracy. <laughs> Is that what it is? <laughs> 35 million people or more, I haven't checked in a year or so, have gone from full-time uh, employment to part-time under Obamacare and then lost any benefits they had. By the way, employers want to pay people more. They want to find the really good employees. They want you to then be taken care of and want to stay there and then help find other people. So once you get kicked out of full-time, you're never even seen as somebody that works there. So now upward mobility has been... 35 million people like that went to part-time. You didn't get Obamacare. The prices of health care have more than doubled. That's on average. It's gone up even more for a lot of people. And there's penalties. And they sit up there and they look at you and they go, it's a lie.
The same guy that thinks there's giant wasp under the UN building, Alex Jones, says that you can't keep your doctor and that there's death panels. <laughs> Waging war on corruption. It's Alex Jones coming to you live from the front lines of the info war. Can you imagine having her as the president? She's already been the president for two terms. Wrecked our economy, turned the jihadis loose worldwide, blocked the army from taking out Al-Qaeda. That was mainly Clinton before Bush even got in. I'm not defending Bush. It's just a fact it was really the Clintons that protected Al-Qaeda more than even Bush did. And now we sit here with her leering over us, wanting to mount our heads in the wall, wanting to settle her score. What is Assange going to release tomorrow? Will it be the final big dump before the election? I think it's going to be a big dump. I think it's half of what he's got. And then I think it'll be the other half about a week before. I think you're going to see half of what he's got, the best stuff, the most powerful stuff. I wasn't told this, but this is what I think. You're going to have half of his best stuff and another half about a week before and I think the media is just going to try to spin it and use it as a test case example of how they can deceive the public. How big will the wiki dump be on what Frank is calling Dump Tuesday? We're going to Frank in a moment. Will Hillary pull a false flag to divert? Will Obama? Will the globalist? We're going to be here. I'm going to go to bed at about 8 tonight. And I'm going to get up. At about 1 a.m., and I'm going to drive over here to the office, and I'm going to broadcast from 2.30 till about 5 in the morning. Is it 3 a.m. Central? That's 4 a.m. Eastern. They're supposed to have a Skype event with him to this conference. We're going to have a Skype feed into the conference, probably even the Skype feed itself for WikiLeaks, and we are going to have it here with live analysis and the first articles coming out with our view on it, your analysis of it. The documents are going to get dumped. You, the listeners, can swarm in, start reading them, help send us uh, emails with links to pages. Because we let's say there's 50,000 pages that get released. We need your help as human intelligence. That's what it's called, human. With keyword search, control F search. That's how you search it. For searching different words and different terms. Go in, control F into each document. Maybe each document has a couple hundred pages. And just search the document, search the document, search the document, search the document. Because we can't do this without you. This is a needle in a haystack. But he's going to direct us to key areas, but there's always little Easter eggs in there, little little goodies. Their NSA system blowing up in their face. I'm going to skip this network break because of the epic uh, history that's taking place and go to your phone calls ahead of Roger Stone joining us. Those of you that are still on, Roger Stone comes on, we'll be able to talk to Roger Stone, ask him your questions or make your comments. The toll-free number is 800-259-9231. I want to introduce Biome Defense, uh, the very best product we can develop and put on the market that we know is uh, just a total game changer. Biome Defense Probiotic, seven years in the making, is undoubtedly from our research, hands down, the very best probiotic out there, period. Now, is there stuff that medical clinics have that may be better? Maybe. But we changed the industry to bring you this. I could have easily private labeled one of hundreds and hundreds of decent probiotics and put our name on it. And had a probiotic four years ago when I launched InfoWars Life. But I didn't do that. I went out and found the developers that were the very best already and said, I want game changers. And it took a long time. You know, they had that old ad for red wine that... Uh, Orson Welles would do where he'd say, we will sell no wine before it's time. Well, four or five years of our development, two years before that with Dr. Grib, it's why he never came out with his own. He had one other that he developed that he said was just, he's even taken off the market. He says, just no comparison to this. This is 50 billion active and live cultures, 23 probiotic strains. And the way it is developed, the way it's kept cool, the way it's got special enzymes to feed the bacteria is, is so amazing. This is the ultimate. 
probiotic. Infowarslife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. Also, the new free app from Infowars. Stay informed and up to date with Infowars Live, your top source of independent alternative pro-human news. Breaking news alerts. Uh, watch the Alex Jones Show live in HD from your phone or tablet. Get the latest headline news free from the distortions of the mainstream media. Every story is organized by categories. You can find the information you want when you want it. It's formatted for phones, video feeds, you name it. Share news with your friends and save stories for later viewing. This app also features radio modes. You can listen to the Alex Jones Show while you're on the run, not just watch the videos. Download this app and join us in the fight to save humanity from the technocratic takeover. Available now for free at both the App Store at Apple and the Android Play Store. Search InfoWars Live on those platforms or go to InfoWars.com forward slash app for direct links. Share this app now with your family and friends. The future of the Republic and humanity depends on it. And by the way, I, I think viewers get it now and listeners. In fact, I'm just now getting it. I saw Paul tweeted this morning and he said, you know, I just talked to a major leader in the fight for liberty worldwide. Let's just say that, a major leader in the fight for liberty worldwide. I don't know who that might be. And this major leader in the fight for humanity worldwide. In fact, let's pull up Paul Watts' tweets. There's so many. It's probably 100 back. The guy's a machine. I'm so proud of him. And he said, I've just talked to a major you know, leader politically. And a judge is telling me I have no idea how I'm influencing this election and you know how big a deal uh, I am. Because you are a big deal, Paul. That's why you got that phone call. And... It's just an example of Paul is like really excited right now. He's not about himself. He really hates the globalists. He wants to beat them intellectually. He knows he's better than them. And it's his fault that they win. Exact same spirit as mine. Oh, it's so good. It's just so good to have a kindred spirit like that. Just where you just click. And they are crapping themselves right now because Paul Watson is slaying on Facebook and Twitter. Slaying. And I'll tell you this, Paul Watson. His overall activity a week is one-third of what we do now. And I cannot tell you how satisfying it is. I don't want to be the guy pulling 80% of the train. I want the people that will get as good as I am and in other ways transcend what I've done. And Paul Watson is that. So very, very exciting things going on. An epic time to be alive. And it's just good, very, very good uh, to be associated with all of you. I don't care what color you are. I don't care where you came from. If you love liberty, if you're pro-human, if you understand what's happening and you get it, your spirit is there, is alive, is awake, is tuned into God's frequency. We're brothers and sisters forever. It's a beautiful thing. That's why when I get around, quote, minorities, who I know have been programmed with racism just like white people have and programmed with inferiority complexes and all the rest of it, and, and that's what globalism is. But they do it to whites more than anybody, but everybody's taught they're inferior. That I don't, when I have anxiety because they don't know I care about them as a human and want to build them up, I don't go into a guilt mode and want to grovel and prove myself. I just want to actually empower the playing field and create a system where everybody can excel. But when you feel that guilt and you feel that pain because the media has created this atmosphere, don't go to the level of submitting to political correctness. Challenge the political correctness so that we can all transcend it and not be controlled by the social engineers that are playing us like a fiddle. All right, Frank, Bobby, Cameron, Dakota, Warren, we're going to all of you. Frank in North Carolina, first caller. What do you think is going to get dumped tomorrow by Assange at 3 a.m. Central? Well, I think it's going to be, um, he's going to basically connect the dots and uh, prove once and for all that Hillary uh, Clinton, Rodham Clinton, which was, I understand, her father's uh, name, but he had changed that from another name. Uh, but I think he's going to connect the dots and show that she's actually an agent working for the Rothschilds, which I think uh, you know most most of these people are. Um, I, uh, I you know I, I really believe that the United States, the people that control the state but State Department, et cetera, et cetera. I think they also have a lot of control. I know this is going to sound crazy, uh, but I think they have a lot of control inside of the government. Uh, apparatus of, of China. Uh, oh, absolutely. The State Department set up the new modern China and made all the deals. That's actually admitted. And I hear you, I've heard you for years say that, you know, the Clintons uh, were real big on selling top secret, you know, technology and everything to uh, uh, 
or, or, or you know, in, yeah, in the, the Russians, the Russians gave the Chinese nothing but old weapons. The United States gave China everything. But, you know, Alex, you know, I, I tried to call you one day when uh, Dr. Savage, Michael Savage was one. And he was going through all this list, this long list of uh, subversive groups in America. And I really wanted to get on and ask him, uh, Dr. Savage, Michael Savage, what do you have to say? about the fact that all of these groups are controlled by people that come from a tiny minuscule part of the world population and a tiny minuscule part uh, of the population of Western civilization and America, et cetera, that these people are primarily Jewish. I thought he would be the perfect person to ask that question. Of. Well, I mean, actually, I've heard Savage talk about the fact that there is a ton of Jewish people in the New World Order, and it's because they use the support and the culture and the history they've got to be bad actors and be evil people. I appreciate your call. I actually heard Savage talk about that. He talked about uh, the fact that Rahm Emanuel's dad led the Ergun and, and other groups that were terrorist organizations um, that uh, Israel had when it was being formed, blowing stuff up, and that he thought he might do a false flag. You know, the truth is there's a lot of different diverse organizations, political stuff, dealing with Israel and Jews. And, and, and Israel really does become a scapegoat uh, in that People that think Jews run everything also project on, like, that I'm Jewish. Well, I'm not. I, if I was, I'd be proud of it. Or that th I was successful, not because I stayed up all night and worked all the time, but because, you know, I was, I, I was you know, getting orders from, from Jews. Uh, quite frankly, uh, Dr. Steve Pachinik's half Jewish. He's a big critic of Israel, but he'll tell you Hillary's probably more under Vatican control uh, than anybody else. I mean, I mean her, the talking points are the Pope's talking points. I mean, I'm not saying it's a Catholic conspiracy either. It's criminal groups within the Vatican, within uh, a, a different Jewish organizations, uh, within Protestant organizations pushing this, within just, it's evil people, I mean, working together. I, I mean, look, the big Jews we've got in all this, since you bring up Jews, this is a very important point, Madeleine Albright's Jewish. Her dad rounded up Jews, sold them out to Nazis. They double-crossed him. Of course they did. I mean, you know, come on. And then ran to Serbia, where they saved him, and then she's been caught with hundreds of millions in stolen German, uh, a, a Jewish... Uh, a German loot. Same story with with um, same thing with Soros and these rich Jews at the end of World War II had incredible intelligence connections. They had intelligence into the Germans, into the Soviets, and everything. So they were promoted into U.S. intelligence very early because of what they knew. They're spies basically, but they work for themselves. I mean, remember, I wouldn't call people that round up millions of Jews and kill them Jews. I'd call them demons of hell. Uh, and, and, and that's why Pachinik hates him so much, because he doesn't talk about it, but it's known. He actually lost family that didn't get out of France that were Jews. Uh, most of his Jewish family was killed. Uh, you know, one part of his family was Catholic, the other was Jewish. And uh, he wrote a book about it. I've read the book. People should read it. It's about his mother. Uh, but he cannot stand the, 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 the modern Jews because he knows they're anti-American, anti-Christian anti-Orthodox Jew, uh, just crazy people that are out to mount everyone's head on the wall and just hate everybody that's productive. Uh, they're just so competitive, they hate everybody else who's competitive. It's like, we're not going to have a race here. I'm just going to shut everybody else down, including rob Jews, rob Christians, work with Islam. I mean, you know. I mean, what do you call Soros allied with Saudi Arabia? He allies with whatever he thinks the future is, just like he, he allied with Hitler. So to say the, the Rothschilds did the same crap, I would call them pure evil. I wouldn't call them Jews. I'd be like if I had a cousin that did something really evil, you know, don't blame the Joneses. That guy's evil, not the rest of us. All right, we'll be back. I'm going to go to uh, our guest and take your phone calls. But it was an interesting phone call. Bobby, you're up next. All right, we are here speculating. We're taking phone calls. What is Julian Assange coming up at 3 a.m. Central? That's 4 a.m. Eastern. Going to be releasing to a German uh, hacking conference in uh, Berlin. Now, the media has disinfoed this, saying he's canceled his press conference. He said, I'm not going to do it from the balcony. I'm going to do it on Skype. Uh, and so Roger Stone has been demonized. He's been attacked last week uh, by Congress and by a whole bunch of Democrats that signed a letter saying they want the FBI uh, to investigate him for talking to Julian Assange, who they then say is a Russian uh, agent. There's no evidence of that. No one's ever said that until now. Russia has tried to pull out of the New World Order. The U.K. has pulled out of the EU of the New World Order. We're trying to pull out. This is populism. Just like Russians don't want to be under foreign control, the Brits don't, we don't, the Icelanders, the Catalan folks in Spain, 
Imagine you'll say, you're Russian agents because you don't want to be part of this artificial union. So we're going to talk about this. Talking to insiders, Roger, they've said, quote, this will destroy Hillary Clinton. That this is, quote, devastating. I know you've tweeted similar things. I know reportedly you've got an intermediary that I'm told some intermediaries have been in London talking to Assange. Uh, so much to get into. Also, Drudge has been linked all day to the interview you did back in January with Danny Williams. You've been talking about this for years, uh, the reported illegitimate son from a prostitute. Uh, I, remember, I remember way back in the time actually talking to people about this 20 years ago. They've been caught lying, saying there's a DNA test. You've countered that, so we'll, we'll cover that. Uh, then there's also the initiative we're launching to exp expose sex crimes, uh, where folks are storming Fox News. Uh, live public events and others. We'll cover the waterfront. I know you're coming on almost daily now. I appreciate that as the quickening happens. 35 days, or really 34 and a half. Roger Stone of the Stone Cold Truth com. Thanks for joining us. Alex, uh, I'm delighted to uh, be here. Let me take care of one piece of housekeeping. Last night with David Knight, uh, I was extremely critical of Mike Smirconish of CNN, a legend in his own mind. I incorrectly said he was fired as the HUD regional director. I was incorrect about that. Um, he managed to hang on to that bureaucratic job. Uh, but as I said last night, uh, this is a guy who has no enemies. It's just that all of his friends hate him. But I do want to correct that record. Um, he stayed on through uh, the beginning of the Clinton administration uh, and was praised by HUD Secretary Cisneros, which should give you some understanding now that we're now that we have resolved that let's turn to mr assange uh i have enormous confidence in his uh, uh in his integrity the accuracy of his information and i have every confidence he will deliver the payload you know i find it's interesting that the left loved him when he was leaking things that were embarrassing to the bush administration but now that he has got the goods on the clintons uh, and he is ready to connect the dots, as far as I understand. All of a sudden, we're vilifying him as a Russian agent. Um, he, is, he works for no one other than himself. He doesn't work for the Russians or the Chinese or the Indians or the Saudis. He works for WikiLeaks. He is his own man, and I have every confidence he will deliver the payload shortly. And I've talked to a lot of Pentagon people, CIA, you name it. What the political class is scared of is highly motivated men and women who they call empowered individuals who are operating on their own. Many times, ideologically, we can't be bought, we can't be pushed around, we can't be intimidated. Uh, to quote Hank Williams Jr., you can't starve us out, you can't make us run. These old boys were raised on shotguns. And I look at Julian Assange proving himself, bipartisanly exposing corruption, having incredible courage. Now we have new emails uh, out, and you've written about this as well, where they're talking about drone strikes. We have an earlier one uh, where the chief of staff, uh, Anne Marie Slaughter, says we need to use non-legal strategies to deal with WikiLeaks. So uh, showing their mafioso, I wonder if we're going to be hearing about this tomorrow. Yeah, I doubt the mainstream media will pick up the uh, theme. Look, uh, Assange correctly fears for his life. If he went out on a balcony as originally planned, then he may be, may be inviting that Martin Luther King moment, which would be horrific. So he has chosen a safer way to disseminate this information. We already know that someone broke into the Ecuadorian embassy only weeks ago and got as far as the second floor. They were scaling it. They were scaling it. Uh, so uh, he correctly fears for his life because he has the deep secrets of the deep state and he's getting ready to spill the beans and bill and hillary clinton know that it, it, it's handcuff time and they know it and they're apoplectic so uh, i doubt that the new york times who paid no taxes last year on a profit of 30 million will take time off from beating up donald trump for uh taking perfectly legal tax strategies to avoid tax, higher taxes. And by the way, since you raised this, I mean, we, we, we harp on this all day. He says, China has a 10% higher corporate tax on us. We need to lower it below theirs. All that money comes back and they go, oh, you want rich people to make more money. No, you have to incentivize them to come here. And, and then he expands on the fact that he's got $9 billion over here that year in profits. 
with buildings and money, but one sector of corporations that didn't do well, so he takes a loss, he passes that forward. That's what you're supposed to do. They wrote well, the tax laws to do that. He wants to get rid of all these loopholes for the American people. He says he'll do it. Well, the point, of course, is that if he were paying more in taxes than he really owed under the current tax code, then he'd be too dumb to be president. That's not the person I want for exactly. president. Exactly. We want He's someone. He is required to pay, just like every other American. And it's also come out that Hillary uses the exact same strategy. Well, God knows what uh, her tax. This is a woman who once deducted the value of a used piece of underwear by Bill that most likely was stained uh, on her taxes. And that is a fact. You can double check that. Although I doubt the people at PolitiFax will rush out. That's right. This lady is such a cheap ass because she doesn't give tips and steals the cutlery and plates from the White House. Uh, look, the Clintons would steal a hot stove. And I think most Americans are catching on to that. That's why the crumbling fetid old world order, I should say new world order, the globalists and the two-party duopoly are in panic mode. Let me ask you that question. We have new photos of another rally today. We put it up on Infowars.com where almost no one's there, like 50 people in a place that holds thousands are there that's mainly media. Everywhere they go, we, we go inside Democratic Party headquarters with hidden cameras. They're saying no one likes her. We don't like her. So I'm hearing they're neck and neck. I think that's all a bunch of baloney. I mean, I don't want to be overconfident here, but I think they're just getting us ready to think it's plausible that she could win so they could steal it. I saw a poll out of Nevada this morning. Now, let me be clear. The Clintons have spent $67 million on media in, in Nevada. The Trump campaign has spent close to zero. This is a state Obama carried by 13 points. Donald Trump is one point down. By the way, this is a Democratic poll. So, no, we have a, we have a close contest where Trump is viable, probably a couple points ahead, Definitely in the in the hunt in the swing states, still ahead in Florida, despite this Cuban uh, a controversy, which is most understated. Never did business in Cuba. Uh, reimbursed some cube some consultant who looked into it and came back empty-handed, probably because of the laws and the unviability of the whole idea. So um, no, we're we're in a horse race. We're in a in a photo finish for the presidency. There are more Democrats in the country than Republicans. Hillary is going to spend one billion plus dollars. Trump, all told, I suspect will be closer to 200 to 250, maybe 300 million. The mainstream media, what's the value of that? Watching CNN yesterday uh, was like watching a wall to wall Clinton commercial. It was either dumping on Donald Trump or excusing the crimes and sexual assaults and cover-ups of those sexual assaults by Hillary. The exact reason I criticized uh, Mr. Smirkanish, a fine lawyer, but who seems to have forgotten the difference between indiscretions, as he put it, and rape. Let me ask are, you this question before we get into Danny Williams. Do they know how ridiculous they look when she comes out in a tape that gets released and is calling Sanders supporters wannabe baristas and dwelling in their mother's basement. And then she goes, oh, I meant that you know, in a nice way. We want to get them out of their basement when it's her policies and bills that literally created the housing bubble, the crisis, uh, the depression in the last eight years, the derivatives, all of it. And then her talking heads are saying, oh, this is a compliment. And then Sanders comes out and says, I agree with her. No, because Sanders said, I'm going to give you free uh, housing and free tuition and free money. Hillary's saying that's all made up, so she's really discrediting what he said, which isn't true, but she can't have it both ways. This is her two-facedness. I'm scratching my head about Bernie Sanders. You know, I underestimated him earlier, but I think unlike the Clintons, at least he's an honest man. I think he's a true-believing socialist. Just because I disagree with his ideas, I don't think he's corrupt, and I don't think he's evil. And, of course, he raised the question of these foreign donations buying her through the Clinton Foundation. Uh, but now he seems to have become a lockstep Democrat. It's very, very disappointing. I thought at a minimum he was a person of integrity. Well said. Uh, I want to take a few phone calls for you to get your take on what they're saying. And I want to talk about Danny Williams after the break. And you'll be gone by the end of the hour. I appreciate your time. I know you're working 18 hours a day here. Uh, Roger Stone, and as the quickening accelerates the next 35 days, expect to hear him almost every day here when he can make it or when his 
when his voice can do it. Uh, but briefly, your shirt that you designed that says Bill Clinton with rape under it is very iconic. Uh, it's not meant to, you know, go out and, and uh, you know, play tiddlywinks with folks. It's meant to shock people. It's meant to create debates. And I'm offering $1,000 for anybody that gets it on national TV. That means if you get it on local TV, it may end up being national. And I'll pay out $1,000. The young man who did it. Look at, these uh, thugs, and, look at these thugs grab him here. These thugs for Fox. Yes, and he's dragged away. And so narrating for radio listeners, we haven't heard from this young man yet. Uh, it's stop rape at Infowars.com. We want to pay him the $5,000. He's just got to take a photo of himself with a shirt and, and today's newspaper and send it to us. We'll send him $5,000 to his address of choice. But we want to get him on air as a guest. So we've been putting this call out for about a day. Haven't heard from him yet. I'm really worried about him. This is like something in Cuba where he just disappeared off the street, uh, Roger. So you, you know right where I'm going with this. Uh, my sources in New York tell me that he is fine. Uh, I believe that they are foolishly going to attempt to charge him with criminal trespass. Uh, a closer look at the video from behind shows that he did not breach the barrier. He kind of propped himself up on it. So he, he held on to it. They were already assaulting him. I agree. First Amendment, buddy. First Amendment. And my friends at MSNBC, you're next. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, I agree with you. At first, I was saying, look, I'm going to pay it out. We just lost the Skype. I'm going to pay it out, even though it looks like he tried to climb the barrier. But if you really look at it, he's not trying to climb until they grab him. Then he's trying to hold on. And so he didn't commit any crime. They're outside advertising. Come here and speak out. They're outside advertising. This is a place for free speech. He did it. And if you don't want this happening, don't be outside. Uh, so I want to find out who this young man is. If his lawyer's telling him, keep your mouth shut, don't go on air, that is the wrong advice. You're hot right now. I'm going to send you your $5,000. And all he did was hold on to the barricade. You're absolutely right. And I want to help you, okay? So uh, we will absolutely, if we need to even help you get a lawyer, we'll do that. You need to contact us at stoprape at infowars.com. And you can get the Hillary for President shirt for 35 days. We're not going to make any more after the election, whether she wins or loses. If she wins, it'll be some new shirt we have to go after her with. I'm so sick of Hillary. Uh, but if you want to get the iconic third generation collector shirt, we're doing one more run of them, and that's it. They're being printed up right now. They're available right now. Hillary for President. We have the Bill Clinton rape shirt, uh, and that is available. And uh, that is licensed from Roger Stone. And look, I'm not going to sell enough of the rape shirts to pay the $100,000 bounty. I'm doing this to try to get the rape out there, the fact that he's settled sexual assault cases. And if they're going to sit there and throw the book at, uh, you know, the Jello guy, they're going to throw the book at Bill Cosby, then they should go after Bill Clinton. I'm so sick of how they love women and how great they are and how sweet they are and how good they are. So I'm really sticking my neck out here. Everybody knows that. I'm taking the Clintons on head on because I just can't go along in life being a coward. And I want to see them defeated for the nation, for my children, for your children. I mean, they're old, twisted crooks that have gotten away with murder. They're delusional. I've got stacks of news. They're starting war with the Russians. Just get Stone on phone, guys. Just get him on phone. If the Skype's down, move to that. Uh, let's go ahead and go to a phone call. Bobby in Washington, you're on the air. Hey. Welcome. Hey, I don't even think uh, he'll be able to make his announcement. I think uh, there will be a problem with the feed or, some, like you said, someone's going to make an attempt on his life or something. And then if, they, if he did make his announcement, it's going to be so detrimental to the Clinton campaign. And the Clinton, everybody, the media, they think that the people in America are so stupid. They'll just blatantly cover it up with some stupid... You know, put put some puppies on the on the air again or something. Stupid. I was about to say, I mean, she fell down on her face with a convulsion. The media said she only slipped, didn't show her fall down, said we made it up that she fell down. They are so arrogant, they might not even care and just say it's all lies or totally ignore it. Uh, Roger Stone joining us via phone because your Skype cut out. Will they do a false flag to divert from WikiLeaks tomorrow? Or uh, will they pull some type of scam? Or, or how will the media deal with these these huge revelations that insiders that have talked to Assange tell us uh, will, quote, uh, destroy Hillary Clinton. Well, the old media, the ones that no one is watching anymore, the networks, CNN, uh, sadly, Fox, um, will try to, to gloss over this and change the subject to some other manufactured nonsense. But the good news is that in America today, 
We have through the internet, through Infowars.com, through Breitbart, dot, uh, Breitbart and News, and dozens of other outlets. Uh, the toothpaste cannot be put back in the tube. Too many people are on to the mainstream media, and they correctly identify them with the rotting, fetid New World Order. They know that the media and the two-party duopoly are in bed together, and therefore they discount most of what they are hearing from network television and the two big cable networks. I agree. Um, but, but I do think that they will try to think, train, change the subject. On the other hand, I am led to believe what WikiLeaks has is so devastating that it will be virtually impossible to ignore. In fact, that's the word I was told by the source. Devastating. I guess you may have the same source, but Assange said this is going to be devastating. That is uh, that is what I heard from uh, my uh, intermediary. Uh, I'm waiting for the witch hunt that Congressman Jerry Nadler, the uh, the uh, uh, load of dung congressman from Manhattan. Uh, this is a, this guy's a 300 pounder. He, you know, red beans and rice did not miss him. Uh, but he has, uh, you know, he has attacked me. I wish he would do it outside the immunity of Congress, uh, accused me, as someone did on Miami radio this morning, of being a Russian agent so that I could file suit against him. Claiming we're Russian agents is like saying Superman is from, 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 from China. I mean, it, it just, none of it makes any sense. Well, it, look, this is the new McCarthyism. Uh, Jerry is in the uh, in the same mold as Joe McCarthy, Roy Cohn, Jerry Nadler, three of a kind. Let's see how his friends on the Upper East Side feel about that. Uh, you know, it's interesting, Alex. Night before last, I was scheduled to be on the other side of Midnight, a radio show that I really enjoy. We were all set to go. I was hooked up on Skype. And then they were hacked, and their entire system went down. The engineers tell me they've never experienced anything like it. So we're clearly doing something right and getting under the skin of the globalists who are scrambling to hold on to power uh, and try to rig or steal this election. Bobby, I'm going to go back to you here in a moment, a few other calls and let Stone go. But let's get into the big story. I know we've talked about trying to get him to go public. You've discussed it a year ago here and, and several other times. Uh, Danny Williams, now the Daily Mail, I guess, scooped everybody. So I'm, I'm kind of glad. I mean, I don't care uh, that, that, that we're not the ones breaking it because at a certain point, it's really asking for it to be breaking it most of the time. Uh, but there it is on DrudgeReport.com. I am Bill Clinton's son. I am real. I want to meet my dad. Set for the first TV interview. There's no link there. I wonder who that interview could be with. And then it says there was no DNA test. That's an interview we did uh, 10 months ago. What can you tell us about this? Because I know that uh, you know Danny Williams. Well, if uh, anybody will get my book, The Clinton's War on Women, which is now out in paperback and, uh, and available at the Infowars.com store as well as the Stone Cold Truth.com store, there's an entire chapter on Danny Williams. He is the abandoned African-American son of Bill Clinton and Bobby Ann Williams, uh, who was a uh, cocaine-addicted prostitute who was with Bill on 13 occasions. She's passed a uh, polygraph test, a lie detector test. She's certain that Bill is the father of Danny because she wasn't, as she put it, with any other white guy in the year prior to his birth. Uh, and uh, Boy, he sure I've looks learned, like Bill Clinton. I've learned things, I've learned things uh, Alex, in the last two days that I didn't know private, previously, that I didn't know when I wrote my book. For example, the fact that a man where uh, driving a car with state license tags would deliver an envelope with six crisp $100 bills, pardon me, seven crisp $100 bills to the mailbox at the little shack where Danny and his mother live every year from the year he was born until the year that his Aunt Lucille took him to meet Hillary Clinton and demand that Danny be acknowledged and supported. Hillary showed uh, Danny's aunt, the door, and told her she would be arrested if she came anywhere near the Clinton. So he's not just Bill's abandoned son. He's Bill's abandoned son banished by Hillary. Black lives matter, unless you're Bill Clinton's son, in which case your life doesn't matter at all. What else can you tell us? I mean, I remember covering this 20 years ago, the reports that uh, Clinton... Um wouldn't send any notes or anything that could prove that he was the father, but that he did occasionally send presents as well. 
Uh, he evidently had uh, Arkansas State Troopers deliver presents to the small shack where Danny lived with his mother. Uh, now they, uh, they, interestingly, I got a report from a friend in Arkansas. Suddenly, out of the blue, Danny's mother, who is out of prison on parole, she has had drug problems, doesn't mean that she's not credible. She's never wavered in her story, and she's passed the polygraph. Uh, and her sister, who is a church lady, who's worked in the same church, uh, pardon me, school cafeteria for 30 years, a solid, respected member of her community, both swear that Bill is Danny's father. Uh, suddenly, uh, the uh, the parole services people have picked Danny's mother up uh, and uh, are trying to incarcerate her again by hooking up some uh, parole violation that I suspect is non-existent. Uh, that's all the information I have at this time. Yeah, I got to tell you, let's think about the Clintons. They're so reckless. You'd think, because I've talked to people in Arkansas, they say this is definitely his kid. I've been talking this about 20 years. Why wouldn't they just take care of the kid and be nice to him? I mean, why wouldn't you just take care of your son? I, I don't get it. Why wouldn't you do the right thing? Uh, you well, know, especially Hillary if you're filthy rich and worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, but Hilly says it takes a village. She's lecturing us on how to raise our families when she's not taking care of her own. This is her husband's son. Uh, but uh, evidently, Hillary believes it would be politically non-advantageous. Uh, I saw an amazing thing on uh, YouTube last night. Bill is shaking hands, signing autographs, and somebody yells out, what about your son, Danny Williams? What do you have to say to your son, Danny Williams? And you can see the look on Bill's face. It's a look of admission. And then We're going to find that video. Where is it? I haven't seen that. that. Where is that video? I want to pull it up. Uh, I, I will try to find the link and send it to you. I saw it on the way here. It was devastating. And then some woman says, we don't want to talk about that. And he said, well, what about the rapes? What about Bill's raping of women? And she says, get out of here. We don't want to talk about it. Well, guess well by what? the way, we, the American people, do want to talk Danny about Danny Williams it. is now <laughs> sharing the video. Let's see if we can cue this up with audio and play this in a moment. Uh, this is amazing. This is coming up. TV viewers can already see it. We're going to have audio for radio listeners. Here very soon. Bobby in Washington, really quick, a, a comeback to uh, Roger Stone. Yeah, no, I just, uh, I agree. Like, we're we're too close to the election. Um, <clears throat> whatever he comes out with, they're going to just try to block it and total change, put a different, just turn the page, make it be something totally different, like it never even happened. It's going to be too detrimental to to the election for Clinton. And then I also had something to say about the Clinton rape shirts. Yes, sir. Um, what about uh, just like going around in your town and like putting up some Clinton rape signs? That's what we're going to come up with a bunch of different PDFs of it. Uh, and the, with, with even more info, we're going to launch that uh, by the end of the week with a big contest nationwide. Uh, it's going to be the Clinton's crime contest uh, with different posters we make. And then folks post those, video it, put it on YouTube. And whatever gets the most press attention uh, will win $20,000. And uh, that is uh, will be announced uh, the day of the election. So twenty thousand dollar for first place, five thousand for second place, one thousand for third place. Uh, so folks can start their engines, make your own posters, you name it. Just do it in legal and lawful areas. We're out of time. Uh, we're going to come back and take calls in the next hour and talk uh, to uh, Mr. Knight. But thank you so much. We'll talk to you uh, very very soon. And I can't wait to uh, know more information by three o'clock uh, this morning when we're going to be covering the WikiLeaks live at a stream at InfoWars.com. Thank you so much, Roger Stone. Alex, great to be here, and uh, I can't wait until 3 a.m. If you're up, they don't want to come on with us. We're going to have the live feed. It won't be on radio, but for everybody online, InfoWars.com. All right, let's run through a bunch of calls right now. Aaron in Washington, what do you think's coming up with the WikiLeaks tomorrow? Alex, thank you for taking my call today. I just, uh, a couple things I wanted to thank you. I know that you don't like people thanking you, but, you know, you are the voice of the resistance. We are the resistance. Thank so you, brother. Definitely want to thank you. Quick plug on your products, Nason Iodine X2, super male, super female, oxy powder. Use them. My wife loves them. I love them. Amazing product. Thank you for the support. Real quick, so what I wanted to call in today, uh, uh, go again. Thank you, sir. You're, you're the one that makes it possible. Please don't thank me. Thank you. Uh, okay. And uh, I wanted to talk about the UN and the fact that they are, and this does have to do with the, uh, Julian Assange and everything like taking over the Internet. Uh, I noticed this on one of the posts dealing with the UN. And one of your commenters said uh, about InfoWars being able to put up dot onion sites or having mirrors.
so that if the dot coms, dot org, if anything like that gets shut down by the UN, it's a little bit harder for them to actually take Absolutely. down the Absolutely. The problem is people then don't know where to find it that used to come to InfoWars. That's why folks have to send us their email so they can follow our free newsletter. So if something happens like that, we have a way to send you the new URL. That's why everyone has to go get the free newsletter, infowars.com forward slash newsletter to get exclusive videos, articles, promo codes, coupons, you name it. Everyone, only a fraction of our listeners, go to infowars.com forward slash newsletter and sign up there. Show that we can actually stay in contact with you. Oh, yeah, and, and I am. And I've been, you know, I've been listening for over 10 years. Uh, uh, former military, a lot of things that uh, you you have said over the years, you know, a lot of things that I've seen that I didn't really believe at first, you know, but until having people that said, well, now, wait a minute, this was different, you know, we, we saw it, and I definitely, you know, the InfoWars has definitely been a big part of that. And well, God bless you. Like, back to the U.N. with what Roger Stone just said is that he went to an interview, and this interview, he said the technical supervisor said, we don't understand what just happened here. So if they are able, and we know that, that with the internet kill switches and with the uh, with everything that they've got set up. Oh yeah, they can't uh, just turn on your camera remotely for 15 years. They can go and do anything they want now. Absolutely, and I mean that's something that you've been spearheading and everything like that. So, but no, ha like just going back, and I'll let you go. And I appreciate the time. Is just yeah, having the people that you have on the newsletters, all of the info warriors that are signed up on your site and everything like that. I'm sure that if once a couple of those dot onion sites are set up by your guys. You know, having those links put out to the info warriors that are on your site. No, I totally agree. We need to create clones of the site every day that are Don Onions and, and other systems and then start promoting, hey, get on the newsletter, hey, get these URLs and start creating clones of the sites ahead of this because this is how they admit they're going to start shutting stuff off, uh, not worldwide at first, but countrywide uh, in, in, in different nations. I mean, it's here. The U.N. is now in control with a multinational consortium with George Soros uh, over the Internet. We have his own emails. Uh, the plan is moving forward. Please don't thank me for letting you talk. You're super smart, smarter than I am. God bless you, Aaron. Uh, let's cram in another call here. Let's talk to uh, Cameron in Missouri. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, this is Cameron. Hello. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing today? Good. Good. Hey, I'm a uh, cultural anthropologist out of Missouri, and what I do is stats for a living, so I want to talk about these BS stats. I really do. There's a lot of crazy things I'm seeing out of road clear politics and whatever else that are just not even close to being reality. And one of the things that really is really obvious to me is how Monoth and quite a few others have been just really skewing things. I mean, have you kind of is this something? Well, there's a lot of ways they're doing it, like sampling almost double more Democrats than Republicans in a poll. That's one obvious way to skew. What else are you saying? Well, right now, the main one is just basically trying to take certain polls and push them out as far as humanly possible. That's what they do. They, they cherry-pick the polls. As far as they can. Stay there. I'm going to come back to you, finish up the hand of the baton tonight, because he's got a lot to cover today. But I want to come back with you uh, and talk about that, because they will pick polls, the, 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 I mean, the few that she won uh, last Monday and last Tuesday. And then now, a week later, didn't you know she won all the polls? Uh, so they're clearly creating a perception management system. I mean, if they had polls that were, you know, the same methodology or whatever, then I would say, okay, you know, she's winning, but they're not. I mean, I mean, take what CNN did last Monday. They sampled 500 and something people, and 40 plus percent were Democrats, 20 something percent Republicans. I mean, right there, it's a joke, people. All right, I've got to go plan with the crew. What's coming up tonight? 2:30 in the morning, we're going to kick off. 30 minutes in, this shadowy German conference is going to begin. We're going to get lined up to have feeds. For Infowars.com, viewers and listeners will fire up a YouTube feed as well of the uh, WikiLeaks press conference. And we'll have coverage of it, co coverage of the documents that come out. Uh, we'll have a feed uh, as well. Uh, we're working to do it. And so that's tonight. I'm going to be staying up. Please spread that link out to everybody. And out of our skeleton crew, whoever volunteers will be here tonight. Paul Watson already wants to be part of it. That is in the middle of the night, 2.30 Central, 3.30 Eastern, Infowars.com forward slash show. We're going to add the YouTube event feed. We're going to add our own internal feed uh, for everybody, and it's going to be big. Uh, Cameron in Missouri, you were holding over. Uh, yes, I'm aware of the uh, sampling, basically double the Democrats in the CNN poll last week. I thought it was bad when Reuters would sample 15% more Democrats than Republicans. Uh, it's who they call. It's what they do. They take polls when Trump wins most of the polls. They pick a few polls and push those where he lost. But 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 you're saying you're somebody that studies, uh, you know, real-time uh, anthropology, cultural anthropology. 
from your perspective, why are you saying these are skewed? Oh, quite. I mean, quarterback and Monarch are probably the worst ones when you're right into it. But, I mean, if you look at it for what they, is, what, what they are, it's just ridiculous. You have – it's so far out off the mean and, and well off into, like, outlier territory sometimes in certain places. And it's, it's insane. And it, it, what cracks me up the most about it is how – if you watch the trends and how they, they move, you'll see that the Trump trend move in the same way, the same upper mobility that the Clinton one will do at the same time. And they'll stay parallel to each other as it goes up. So it's obvious you can see how they're skewing it. it, it it's crazy. And you, you know, you see, you, you'll never see things like that ever because if you take one away from one group, you usually you have. Some sure, I get it. Normally, numbers. polls move in the opposite directions. But you're seeing them all pegged together, basically. Exactly. And it, I realized you wanted to talk about the WikiLeaks thing today, and that's the reason I called in. But the only the one thing that I really thought was interesting. When you take a look at the map as it's set up by Real Clear Politics right now, there is a very well possibility you have a tie the way it's set up right now between the Clinton and Trump. Sure, uh, it's, it's 268 uh, against vote. each other, 268 in the Electoral College. But that's with Real Clear Politics giving Florida to Hillary when most polls have shown he's been way ahead. Suddenly they're claiming they're neck and neck. Who really buys that? They're claiming well, right-wing Cubans are mad he wanted to do business in Cuba. She's the one that opened Cuba up. I mean, it's just it, when you know what they're saying, you know it's pure bull. Thank you, uh, Cameron. We've got Anne Marie and Warren and Matt and others on what they think is going to be coming out, and Chris in Florida and others. But I'm going to hand the baton to David Knight, and then coming up this evening, if you're up uh, at you know 2:30 Central, we're going to be here. If not, once you wake up in the morning, it'll be archived at Infowars.com, the live feed. So we have a first look and first analysis and first take before the enemy gets their spin in. So that video and those reports will be posted to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. With all the Internet censorship and things that are happening, please don't take the sites uh, for granted. We can always put up new sites on the web, but they can take down our main URLs. That's why you, we need to have your email contact to be able to contact you uh, to, to be able to bypass the censors. I mean, we may have to upload a video ourselves on our server and then send you a link. I mean, it's things like that that more and more we're already having to do. The censorship is intensifying because we're on target. Uh, again, it's very, very humbling to have all of you call in and have your support. Thank you for your support. Uh, we are running 33% off on solar power generators and controllers at InfoWarsStore.com. We have the new probiotic uh, in uh, the biome defense as well at InfoWarsLife.com. But I'm going to go ahead and hand the baton to David Knight. The Nightly News is also on tonight, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. If we're the deplorables, people working for the system are on the wrong side of history. They are the delusionals. David Knight from the InfoWars News Center in Austin, Texas. Thank you, Alex. Uh, let's go to some of the calls, and uh, we're going to also, we've got some news we're going to cover at the bottom of the hour. We've got uh, a basically a trade war that has developed between the United States and Germany. That's what really is behind this Deutsche Bank issue. And it's a very serious trade war. And I'm going to go back and, and take a look at this. This goes back, I believe, it's a tit-for-tat going back, as uh, Zero Hedge pointed out, going back to the apple fines but i think it goes and by the way six months before i just interrupted i say i'm punching out but i wanted to cover this cover of the new york times saturday admitted deutsche bank could be worse than 2007 2008 exactly what we said six months ago go ahead yeah it's, it's pretty unreasonable that this would go back <clears throat> until uh, 2008 they're just now coming after them <laughs> nearly uh eight years later uh, for And actually, this is stuff that happened before 2008. So we're looking at something that's about 10 years old. They just happened to decide that they would do this at the same time the Germans put a fine on Apple. But I think it goes back even further than that. I think the Apple issue was a retaliation against the out-of-control regulations from the Obama administration on Volkswagen, trying to put them out of business. So you see, what we have here is a trade war that is not being fought to protect countries, a trade war that is being fought to protect preferred corporations. That's exactly what we got, folks. We have a globalist government. We have trade treaties that are written by these corporations to protect these corporations. And this is what we see happening right now. They want to tell us, hey, without globalism, you're going to have all kinds of trade wars. Folks, you're going to have massive trade wars with globalism. There's always protected interests involved. The question is, whose interests are being protected? We're also going to talk about a Texas lawmaker who's proposing to teach teens how to interact with the police. Really? 
I think he's got that upside down, as well as more revelations about illegal voters, voter fraud in Virginia. This is something that just keeps going and going and expanding. So we're going to talk about that. But first, let's go to some of our callers. Anna Marie in Pennsylvania, go ahead. God bless you. God bless you for what you do. Thank you. God bless you. Um, Assange's October surprise will finally get her indicted. Uh, too many people are waking up to these prostitutes, these castrated traitors that are the media. Let me ask you, do you uh, think that, you know, do you think that he's going to have any information that would cause Hillary Clinton to be indicted? I mean, we had the FBI director list felony after felony that she created, said she sent and received classified emails. She altered this stuff. She deleted data. But, you know, uh, there was no criminal intent here, so I'm going to let her go. This is a guy who has worked for her for decades. His law firm and Loretta Lynch's law firm used to prepare her taxes. He used to be on HSBC's board, the same people that Loretta Lynch and Eric Holder gave a pass to multiple times for money laundering for drug cartels and terrorist organizations. Do you really think that uh, they will, they will, uh, there'll be any information there that would ever get her uh, prosecuted for anything? I'm, I'm curious. What do you think? If Hillary provided arms to ISIS, would that completely implode her campaign if there's irrefutable, indisputable, and dire proof from emails? I don't think so. I don't think so, because you know what? I've talked to the Democrats at the DNC. I talked to them about the uh, email situations, which is very clear cut. And it just, they, it just does not register to them. It is a see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil of Hillary Clinton. It, it doesn't matter. You could have video footage of her cutting people's heads off, uh, wearing orange jumpsuits, and I don't think anything would happen to her. I think the only way we're going to punish her is to shut down her lifelong political ambition. That's the only punishment I think you're going to get against Hillary Clinton. If we can defeat her, if she doesn't rig the elections, I think that's the only punishment she can get. And I think that's one of the best reasons to go vote uh, is to uh, shut down and punish Hillary Clinton. Nothing could, dis I mean, if you, if she loses this election, you are going to hear this shriek coming out of Washington, D.C., or wherever she's holed up at this point, uh, that is going to be blood curdling. I mean, she's going to be melting like the Wicked Witch. That's the only way that you're ever going to be able to punish her. I don't think you're going to be able to send her jail even after the election if Trump wins. But I think that would be enough punishment for her. That would be a fate worse than death for Hillary Clinton, somebody who desires power that much. Well, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to happen. You know, the media wouldn't even turn the cameras around to show the 15,000 people at the venue on, at Mannheim mm -hmm. on Saturday night. Trump asked the press three times, turn the cameras around and show all these people, and they would not do it. That's they right. And then when they have her it. rallies, what they do is they pack everybody together up close and they get a group shot to make it seem like there's a massive crowd. You, you can play those games. I've, I've seen that done many a time at political rallies, believe me. And that's exactly what they're doing, trying to create an equivalence. They're trying to ignore the reality. And the question is, and we all know, we all know what the truth is if we're paying attention. But there's a large group of people here, I guess this is what the debates are about, trying to reach the uh, low information or no information voters. There's a reason they're low information, no information. They don't know, they don't care. And, and it's really hard to say uh, what they're going to be focused on. I'm, I'm really not sure. So I'm very pessimistic about it, but I do think that that is the best way to shut Hillary Clinton down. And I think that if people show up in sufficient numbers, if it is a true landslide like we see with the events that the two of them are going, if it's that skewed at the election polls, I think what they will do is allow him to proceed and then attempt in another way to shut Donald Trump down, like infiltrating him with people from the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, other neocons, uh, you know, populating his State Department like they did Ronald Reagan with uh, 300 people from the Council on Foreign Relations after the election. I think it's about 360 people they put in with Ronald Reagan because he wasn't a member. He wasn't part of the club. So they saturated the bureaucracy with people after the election. Well, I, I'm not. I know there's a lot of people waiting to get on. I'm not going to take up yeah. much of your time. But there's something I wanted to. You watch the debate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I actually, I actually, I didn't. I was kind of over in the back, just responding to some clips that they gave me. So I didn't get a a, a back and forth of the debate. Uh, I've just seen okay. uh, bits and pieces of it. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, at, at the end of the debate, Mr. Trump patted this wretched being that he calls a criminal on the back. Now mm -hmm. I understand the handshaking. Maybe that's a necessary evil. But the back patting at the end of the debate. Maybe he was checking I mean, for some wires and advice. We've seen that she had some kind of concealed carry. We don't know exactly what that was, but I think he was too deferential. I agree with you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back.
night to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight in this uh, fourth hour. Tonight we're going to have the massive document leak, and we've got a couple of people on the phone to uh, talk to us about that. After that, we're going to talk about a gun show that is having, uh, again, this is another movement by the Department of Homeland Security, this time by Immigration, uh, Customs Enforcement, ICE. All these different branches of Homeland Security are now going around to gun shows. This is not something new, but yet it's happening yet again. More evidence of it happening with more agencies doing this, going to gun shows and capturing people's license plates. That kind of surveillance, you know. Uh, the kind of old-fashioned surveillance, but still a violation of your Fourth Amendment rights, something you should be very concerned about. We're also going to talk about a 1,000 illegal voters in eight Virginia localities. A Texas lawmaker proposes a bill to teach teens, teens how to interact with the police and also what's going on with Deutsche Bank. All that's going to be coming up in the news. But before we get to that and before we get to our callers, I just want to remind you that we have a new product, Biome Defense. It's the first ever probiotic that we've had at InfoWarsLife.com. It's a superior blend of live and active cultures from 23 different probiotic strains known to support digestion and inter intestinal function. So you can find this at InfoWarsLife.com. Take a look at this. Understand that gut health is one of the most important factors in your immune system uh, being able to fight off disease and infection. This is a lot of research that's come out in the last year talking about just how important gut health is. Of course, uh, Dr. Group has been talking about that for a very long time. Many people already knew that, but now it is becoming mainstream. People are beginning to understand the effect of probiotics on your gut health. Again, this is 23 different probiotic strains, very important, uh, very high quality, produced in the U.S. Also, you can get it in ultra strength or in regular strength formulations. That's at InfoWarsLife.com. Start charging your gut health with our ultra high quality probiotics. Also, our solar base station power supply is now 33% off retail at InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget to check out our free app. You can stay informed and up-to-date all the time with our content, whether it's articles or video reports, as well as broadcasts of the uh, radio show. Also available if you want to watch the show, because we do a lot of uh, visual stuff on our radio show. We also have a video feed of that that's available through that new app as well, and that is free. So be sure to check that out. Let's go to our callers right now. Let's go to uh, Warren in Georgia. Go ahead, Warren. Uh, hey, David. Um, hey. Great to be on the show. Thank you for calling. Uh, so I was calling about the uh, WikiLeaks dump tonight, and, you know, I'm really, at this point in time, uh, this is actually my first election to vote in, and I think at this point in time, nothing really surprises me anymore. So I'm not really sure what could be so devastating uh, to Clinton that uh, Julian Assange might have. But I really think that uh, whatever it is, it's just going to connect the dots and expose who she really is um, and just legitimize everything we've been trying to expose and talk about. Well, uh, I, I think, think it'll energize uh, Trump's base. It may convince some people who have not been paying attention. It may be so shocking that it will convince them. But, uh, you know, for the people who are hardcore Democrat supporters, they have so bought into this uh, team situation, identifying with this. Uh, there is absolutely nothing, I think, that's going to come out that's going to convince their minds. I could be wrong. I hope I am. Uh, they should wake up. They should understand what is going on with this. And they should have, a long time ago, pushed back against the idea that every four years we're electing a dictator. They were just fine with that, as long as it was a dictator that they liked. Now that it's somebody on the other side of the political spectrum, they're frightened to death because they're down with this whole uh, uh, president as dictator thing. So I think that's something that the Democrats should start to take a very close look at. Thank you so much. I want to rush and get these other callers. Thank you, Warren. Let's go to Matt in Ohio. Matt? Hi, David. Thanks for taking my call. Um, Thank you. I think that the... Uh, Hillary's biggest Achilles heel has got to be Libya. Um, and the reason I say that is because, you know, the evidence shows that it was really a campaign of mass murder uh, that was waged on the Libyan people. Yes. And if the election ever goes to, you know, mass murderer versus whatever politically uncorrect businessman, you know, the mass murderer is going to lose every time. Um, and we also need to understand that what she was doing there was essentially throwing the sub-Saharan Africans, mostly black, under the bus to support the people who then became ISIS. And they were talking about how they would uh, shoot uh, non-Libyans on site. Well, how did they know they were non-Libyans? Well, they were black people that were coming in there. They would identify them as such. And it was Gaddafi that was helping sub-Saharan Africa to try to get independence, not only the massive oil reserves, but also with massive water reserves, also with gold and silver that he had set aside to back his currency 
indirect competition to the bankers. We've already seen this revealed in the emails. Now, if we get more detail from that, it'll be very damaging for her if it spells it out more succinctly, more clearly. But we've already had that spelled out. We've already told people about it. But the people who don't want to hear it don't hear it. But go ahead. You should um, look for a, um, a guest. Uh, Jim and Joanne Moriarty, they were uh, business people. They owned a... Uh, oil well uh, restoration company. Okay, I got about five seconds. Libya. All right, well, right, we got to go to a break. Thank you so much, uh, Matt in Ohio. Again, tonight we're going to see a massive dump of documents from WikiLeaks that Julian Assange has been talking about for quite some time. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host for the rest of this hour. I want to take a look at how the world is devolving into warfare. And, of course, we've talked in the past about the Middle East wars. Uh, we have created ISIS. We are just talking to a caller saying, you know, what are these revelations tonight going to be about? Are they going to be about Libya? That's where Hillary Clinton set the Middle East on fire, where she armed ISIS, made it essentially the base camp for ISIS, and then moved this uh, conflict into Syria and into Iraq. But at the same time, we've also had our State Department, Victoria Nuland, uh, George Soros, and others began civil wars in the Ukraine and the Crimea going right to the doorstep of Russia, and then threatening this last week that if uh, Russia interferes uh, with, uh, if, if uh, they wish, they can interfere with Russia, I should say, in Syria, and ground the Syrian Air Force, ground the Russian Air Force. We had General Petraeus talking to Charlie Rose, uh, it was Wednesday or Thursday last week, saying it's not too late to declare the area a no-fly zone and just tell them we're going to shut down anything and we're going to shoot down anything that you put up in the air. And that goes for the Russians as well. He says, we don't have to put planes in. We can do it with cruise missiles. We can do it with other types of missiles. You know, it's going to be uh, no cost at all to us is what he's trying to tell people. We're so superior, we can tell the Russians what to do and they'll just have to do it. They're flirting with a world war, with a hot war. They've already restarted the Cold War. Are they going to start World War III? And then the question is, what about economic war? What about a trade war? You know, we're told that we have to have globalism because if we don't have globalism, we're going to fall into a trade war and another Great Depression because they always sell this false narrative that the Great Depression was created by the passage of the Smoot-Hawley Trade Act. You can even see that in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, okay, <laughs> where he's sitting there, you know, t telling the kids, uh, Bueller, Bueller, you know what, uh, what created this? And you got the very dry... Economics professor going through uh, telling them the false origins of uh, the Great Depression. No, actually, you know, it was uh, the Federal Reserve chairman himself, Bernanke, said, uh, yeah, we caused the Depression. The Federal Reserve caused it. Sorry about that. We won't do it again. Well, it can be started by a number of things. Protectionism can, in fact, start trade wars that can turn into depressions. But today, if we have a trade war, I want to show you what's going on now with Deutsche Bank. This is a very serious situation. First of all, what's happening there? Well, we've got articles uh, that we've put up on Drudge. Uh, on uh, You can see them on the Drudge Report as well as on our site. Uh, Zero Hedge has one. Some Deutsche Bank clients are unable to access cash due to, quote, IT outage. Now, this is a situation, they say, uh, the bank suffered a further blow. This is as it's reported by Reuters and Handelsblatt, a German uh, press organization. They say Deutsche Bank suffered a further blow to its image this weekend with a third IT outage in the space of a few months on Saturday that, quote, prevented some customers from getting access to their money for a short time. Among rumors that about state aid, the dramatic fall in stock price and an attack by hedge funds on the most important domestic bank, now come reports of a new IT glitch where customers cannot access their cash because it is blocked. And some of the customers say, I'm stunned. I can't make weekend purchases. I can't get cash out. I can't pay by card. That's what happens, folks, when you put your money in the bank and there's a run on the bank and it goes down. Just go back to It's a Wonderful Life. Take a look at what happened with that. It, it shows you, uh, because nobody in living memory really understands uh, the runs on the banks as part of the Great Depression. So that's a very serious uh, consequence of that. But Financial Times breaks it down this way. They say analysts think that the market jitters over the massive fine that's been imposed by against Deutsche Bank by the United States, and that's what we're going to talk about next, have exposed much deeper structural weaknesses that are plaguing Europe's banking system. Not, it's actually plaguing Europe's entire economic system. Things like negative interest rates, weak economic growth, and tightening regulation. 
Okay, that's the situation in Europe. And that's why they're playing with fire. They're playing with fire there with, this, with these fines against Deutsche Bank in the same way that the Obama administration is playing with fire in Syria and Iraq and the Ukraine. They are bringing this up to the cusp of warfare, whether it is real warfare or economic warfare. This administration and Hillary Clinton are hell-bent on creating chaos and destruction throughout the world. You have to understand that. You have to understand that they want to burn the system down so they can rebuild their own new system with themselves at top, at the top, all right? Now, Zero Hedge had a very interesting article breaking this down. German politicians accuse the U.S. of economic warfare against the Deutsche Bank. He said, when we first heard the news that the U.S. Department of Justice, that'd be the same people who see absolutely no crime with Hillary Clinton's thousands of felony violations of national security, the religion that we have based our government upon, uh, the US, same U.S. Department of Justice has slapped Deutsche Bank with a $14 billion settlement. They did it on September 15th. And they say it's a, a number that looked oddly similar to the $14 billion fine that the EU had slapped on Apple just a few days before. Isn't that interesting timing? Here we have a situation, and you understand what they're coming after them for. They're saying, you did uh, some speculative investment before, before the 2008 global financial crisis. This is something they're talking about that is about 10 years old. And they happened to do it. They happened to wait for 10 years to come after Deutsche Bank. But they did it a couple of days after the EU. And understand, Germany is the EU, folks. They run the EU. So you can talk about the EU or you can talk about Germany. They are in, uh, you can't uh, distinguish between the two of them. So they wait for 10 years. And they say, well, you know, all this speculation stuff that ran up, created the banking bubble of 2008, the financial crisis. We're going to come against Deutsche Bank now. Ten years later, we're going to do it a couple of days after the EU slash Germany puts a $14 billion fine on Apple. And guess what the fine against Deutsche Bank is going to be? The same amount of money they just fined Apple for, $14 billion. Isn't it really obvious? And we've had German politicians making the point as well, German Parliament uh, Economics Committee chairman said the move against Deutsche Bank has the characteristics of economic war. He says the U.S. has a long tradition of using every available opportunity to wage what amounted to a trade war if it benefits their own economy. And another German politician, also a Merkel ally, said the Deutsche Bank investigation is a tit-for-tat response from the U.S. Department of Justice after Brussels imposed a record 13 billion euro penalty against Apple's tax misdoings in Europe. And then Zero Hedge goes on to point out it's not just Apple, however. Uh, this year, Germany's Volkswagen agreed that they would have to pay a $16.5 billion fine in the U.S. for cheating on American diesel vehicle air pollution tests between 2008 and 2015. And let's put this in perspective. I talked to Eric Peters. We've had his article. Uh, Eric Peters has an auto blog. He's a libertarian in his philosophy. And he correctly pointed out that this situation with VW is not anything that threatens anybody's lives. Okay, You can go back and you can look at the fines that they put against Ford Motor Company with the exploding Pinto when it was hit in the back. Or after that, we had uh, the SUV tip-over uh, issues where a lot of people were killed in all of those different instances. Or look at the situation that's currently ongoing with airbags. A lot of millions upon millions of airbags from a lot of different air, uh, automobile manufacturers. And yet, all of these life-threatening things don't get anywhere close to a fraction of what they're coming after VW for. And I forget what the numbers were for Ford, but it was, it was something like 10% uh, of what they're coming after Volkswagen. This could shut Volkswagen down. And they brought Volkswagen to heel with this. And now Volkswagen is going to come out with an electric car because that's what they wanted. They wanted to shut down diesel completely. Why? Because even though they can make very clean diesel engines that are more fuel efficient and that are more environmentally friendly, quite frankly, folks, when you look at the life cycle energy requirements and the disposal of these dirty batteries, this technology that we have right now. So it's technology we have, technology that is very clean, uh, that can be used even to take out the particulate matter, but uh, very fuel efficient and far more economical 
for the customer than an electric car. When you look over the life cycle, you have to replace these batteries after a few years. They don't last that long. The diesel engines last forever. Okay, They wanted to get rid of diesels. They want to get rid of all carbon fuels, okay? And that was the gun to their head. And if they'll tell VW, if you'll play along and make an electric vehicle, we'll find some way to, uh, to work this out for you, perhaps. I don't know. But I think this is where it really started. I think first we had the Obama administration decide that for their, uh, their carbon fantasy that uh, they're using to create a, and fund a world government. The carbon taxes are going to be used to fund a world government. They have to have a worldwide cause to create a global government. And that is their carbon fantasy. Okay, their global uh, human-caused uh, global warming. That's what they have to, uh, uh, that, that's what they came up with to push this. And we've talked about this in detail, so I'm not going to go into that. But they came up with that. That's what they really wanted to push. So they came after Volkswagen and hammered them with a fine that could extinguish that company. And they're continuing to go with that. And I think that was the initial salvo. Then Germany comes back and goes after Apple. Then immediately, the U.S. comes back and goes after Deutsche Bank for something that happened 10 years ago, just a couple of days after they went after Apple. So here's what's going on, folks. The globalists tell you we cannot have trade deals that are in the interest of America or trade deals that are in the interest of uh, Britain or whatever. You cannot negotiate trade deals that are the, in the interest of your people, in the interest of your country. Because that would shut down the trade deals that are in the interest of the massive corporations. And you can't see that any more clearly than when these guys would create a worldwide economic war that could possibly uh, bust the European uh, political system. They will do that to protect the corporations that run the government, the corporations, the multinational corporations that are the government. Can't you see that the multinational corporations that wrote the TPP are the government? They write this in secret without any input from our elected representatives. They ram this thing through with the cooperation of both Democrats and Republicans at the top and say, you're not going to be allowed to look at this. And when we have one senator, one senator, Senator Sessions, who takes a look at it, and gives a presentation, they completely ignore it. And they say, we're going to pass these things once they're brought up. We're going to bring them to the floor. And we're going to run these things through without any debate, without any amendment. And you're not going to have any say-so on it. And Senator Sessions, who has read this and warned us about it, said it's going to create a living document, is what it is. And it's going to create a commission outside of all of these countries that is going to be above the countries. They're going to manage our trade. They're going to manage our economy. And we're going to have absolutely nothing to say about it. And they can bring in any country they want to at that point in time. They're saying this is a, a defense against China. They can bring in China the day after they create this unaccountable commission, this international commission. So that's what's really happening with globalism versus Americanism. You need to understand that. It's another trade war for the benefit of the corporations, not for the countries. Now, I want to talk about some other things I think impinge on individual liberty. We have a Texas lawmaker proposing a bill to teach teens how to interact with the police. This is a Breitbart story. This is a state Senate Democrat out of Houston. He announced on Thursday that he plans to file a bill mandating that schools teach students how to behave when they are stopped by officers for either traffic violations or for any other reason. Because you need to understand that whether it is a petty violation for a traffic infraction that they just want to shake you down for some money, or whether it is stop and frisk, you need to understand that in America today, folks, you are guilty until proven innocent. That's the operating principle. It started with the IRS, and now every bureaucracy is doing it, and now the police on the street are doing it. Not only are you guilty until proven innocent, but you are also an armed killer until proven unarmed and safe by the police. And they will treat you as such. They feel they have a right to shoot you on sight if they want to. So now, instead of getting the police trained, instead of getting the police under control, they're now going to take our children that we have put in schools that operate like prisons with prison guards and cops who taser, who arrest, who brutalize students whenever they violate any of their petty rules. Now we are going to have the students learn how to behave in an authoritarian police state. An important survival tip because they're not about to change what's going on.
That's the sad situation in America. Makes me furious when I look at stuff like this. Texas lawmaker proposes to teach you how to lick the boots of the police state. The hell with them. All right, let's talk about uh, the next attack on our individual liberty. The jury is out on citizen jurors. This is an article that's on uh, the Daily Caller, and they take to task a guy who wrote an op-ed piece for the Investor's Business Daily. His name is Yuri Venetic, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And if I'm not, sorry, Yuri, I really don't care. Uh, it says he wants to scrap the existing juror selection system and put in panels of professional jurors. Because you know what? Citizens are ill-prepared, he says, to handle complex issues. Well, maybe the laws are too complex. And maybe what we need are some citizens with backbones who understand that when the laws become sufficiently complex, it's the same as having no law at all. And the government can do whatever it wishes. And their first responsibility is to set in judgment of the law. Now, clearly, we understand that if violent crime is involved, if you have raped somebody like Bill Clinton, unless you're a Clinton or something, if you've raped somebody, you should be punished. The Clintons, of course, they get a pass, okay? But if you have committed a violent crime against somebody, there's no question in an ordinary citizen's mind, unless they're blinded by political loyalties, that rape is wrong. Or that shooting or killing somebody is wrong. So we don't have to question the laws against rape or murder. But we do need to question the laws against tax violations, or the laws against traffic violations, or the laws against illegal drug prohibition that was created by the U.N., and we need to sit there as jurors and say, like they did during alcohol prohibition, you know what? Alcohol prohibition is the law of the land. Alcohol prohibition at the time had been passed with a constitutional amendment, which we never bothered to do with drug prohibition. Therefore, drug prohibition laws are null and void, and every juror ought to be, allowing, uh, ought to be releasing people who are brought before them. Because even when it was done properly, people saw how abusive it was. And even during alcohol prohibition, they came after the people who were selling the drugs, the alcohol. They came after the bootleggers. They came after the Al Capones or whatever. And even then, they said, you know what? Uh, I don't think we ought to send these people to jail just for selling alcohol. But today, we come after the end user. Today, we come after the kids. And we lock them up. Thank you, Clintons and Bushes and even Reagans okay, and Obamas. We lock them up. For things that should not even be a crime. For things that are not even legally prohibited under the Constitution. There is no authority in the Constitution to prohibit marijuana, to prohibit cocaine, to prohibit heroin. If you think those things can be solved with uh, prohibition, with legal prohibition, you're a fool after 45 years. But if you want to do it, be my guest. Pass the Constitutional Amendment. Until you do that, you're violating the law. When we come back, we're going to talk about Bill Clinton's mixed race Son, and I'm not really so sure that this is something that's going to work out to Trump's advantage. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. Our last segment here. I want to, before we start, I want to talk about uh, Bill Clinton and his uh, new love child. Uh, that it's not new, uh, <laughs> but the uh, one that's now being publicized all over the uh, media. We've been talking about it for years. Uh, but before we get to that, I just want to uh, remind you that we have a new product at InfoWarsLife.com, Biome Defense. Again, you can get it in ultra strength or regular strength. Either way, it is a superior blend of live and active cultures from 23 different probiotic strains known to support digestion and intestinal function. And also, as we've seen from much research, it has a key effect on your entire immune system, your ability to fight off diseases. Very important for your health to have good probiotics. It's the first time we've ever offered this, and it is a very high quality made in the U.S. product. Also, we have 33% off InfoWars solar base station power supply. It is not only, uh, it lasts eight times longer than the typical unit, and it is portable. You can hook it up to uh, whatever you wish. You can even take it along with you. The whole thing uh, breaks down and is transportable, as you can see in that video right there. You can see that at InfoWarsStore.com. Also, our free app from InfoWars, uh, InfoWars Live app. You can get the radio broadcast in either audio or video format. You can see all of our uh, articles as well as special reports. And for events like we're going to have tonight, uh, the live coverage of Julian Assange's um, uh, revelations that he's been promising for a long time. It's great to have something on your phone that puts that all at your fingertips, and that is free. InfoWars Live app. 
Now, let's look at the, uh, real quickly, at the situation developing with Bill Clinton. And before I do, I want to just cover this story. It was on uh, Breitbart. I saw this uh, yesterday. The BBC has fired yet another very popular uh, person on the network because they're white and male. And I say another because we saw this happen already with Jeremy Clarkson. You know, with Jeremy Clarkson, they blamed him on the fact that he took a swipe at uh, one of the producers. They'd been working for like 12 hours. He came back and the guy was in charge of getting food, had no food. He lost it and uh, took a swipe at the guy. Okay, so they said, that's it. That's the last straw. But they'd been wanting to get rid of Jeremy Clarkson for a long time. He was a thorn in their side because he wasn't politically correct. And nowhere is political correctness valued more than at the BBC. And that program, Top Gear, was the most popular, most lucrative program that they had on the BBC. Now we've got a guy, John Holmes. He's been on Radio 4's The Now Show for the last 18 years. Uh, also co-created another program that they had. Uh, he has won two BAFTAs. I think that's the equivalent in the UK of an Emmy that we have here for TV awards. Eight Sony Awards and two British Comedy Awards. This is a guy who produces, right? But he's been fired. Why was he fired? Because he's a white male. He tweeted out, sad to announce that I've been axed from the BBC Now show as, quote, we want to recast with more women and diversity, unquote. Tisk, tisk, he said. And I didn't even punch a producer. Yeah, that's the way this is going. Now, he said he spoke out uh, on an exclusive interview with uh, the Mail on Sunday. He said he was not the only person who has been rejected by the BBC because of what they call positive discrimination. Isn't that nice? It's positive discrimination when you're racist and you're sexist. If you're racist and sexist against the right people, see, it's a great thing. No, it's not a colorblind society. It's not the society Martin Luther King talked about where you are treated as an individual. No, as a matter of fact... I didn't even get to Bill Clinton, didn't get to my take on it. But I just want to mention this. If you think this is about race, if you think this is about elevating people, understand, as we see, and I think this is on Drudge Report, New Smithsonian Museum hails Anita Hill, but barely mentions Clarence Thomas. Why would that be? Because they always called Clarence Thomas an Uncle Tom. I'll never forget Joe Biden coming after him viciously because he supported natural rights. The idea that all men are created equal, that they should be treated as individuals. They can't stand that. They want to put you in groups to control you. Join us tonight for the Infowars Nightly News at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.